Arizona Driver License Manual and Customer Service Guide. Aided Motor Vehicle Division. az.gov slash mvd. Douglas A. Ducey, Governor. John S. Halakowski, Director. Eric R. Jorgensen, Division Director. Dear Arizona Motorists. The Arizona Department of Transportation Motor Vehicle Division, aided MVD, is pleased to provide this guide to Arizona traffic laws and information for obtaining a driver license or identification card. This manual also provides essential safety information for both new and experienced Arizona drivers. Aided MVD delivers services to millions of Arizona motorists each year. In line with the division's vision of getting Arizona out of the line and safely on the road we are continuously improving processes to provide swift and efficient service. In addition to coming into an office, Aided MVD offers alternative methods for Arizonans to access services. For example, two-thirds of all transactions, including common ones like registration renewals, sold notices, title transfers, ordering a replacement license, Updating insurance information, ordering a motor vehicle record, and more can be done online at azmvdnow.gov. We also encourage Arizona drivers to take advantage of the more than 160 privately operated authorized third-party locations to serve you across the state. Several of these locations offer both title and registration and driver license transactions. Find a location convenient for you at az.gov slash mvdlocations. We look forward to providing you with outstanding customer service and a safe driving experience while we continue our mission of moving Arizona's citizens, economy, and infrastructure by getting safe drivers and vehicles on the road. Sincerely, Eric R. Jorgensen, Director, Motor Vehicle Division, Arizona Department of Transportation, 1801 West Jefferson ST. Phoenix, Arizona, 85007az.gov Table of Contents 4. Office Locations and Hours 6. Fees at MVD Offices 8. Arizona's Driver License 16. Section 1. Before You Drive 18. Section 2. Safe Driving Practices 26. Section 3. Roadway and Vehicle Knowledge 39. Section 4. Sharing the Road with Other Vehicles 41. Section 5. Actively Avoiding Crashes 52. Section 6. Handling Emergencies 56. Section 7. Law Enforcement About This Manual this manual is designed to help you obtain a driver license or an instruction permit by explaining the Arizona motor vehicle laws without using technical language. Details of the motor vehicle laws can be found in Arizona Revised Statutes at azlg.gov under Title 28 Transportation which offers the most up-to-date and accurate information. MVD is providing this manual electronically to help ensure you have the most up-to-date information. If you are applying for a motorcycle license, you will need to study the Motorcycle Operator Manual in addition to this manual. If you are applying for a commercial driver license, please refer to the Commercial Driver License Manual. All manuals are available online at az.gov slash mvd. Questions or comments? Phoenix 602-255-0072 Tucson 520-629-9808 Elsewhere in Arizona 1-800-251-5866 TDD Hearing Slash Speech Impaired Service 602-712-3222 Arizona Driver License Manual and Customer Service Guide azmvdnow.gov It's fast, convenient, secure, offers more than 20 online services, and is continuously expanding. AZMVDNow.gov is MVD's authorized service website that allows our customers to conduct a variety of motor vehicle and driver license transactions online. AZMVDNow.gov now offers online appointments that allow our customers to choose the best time to visit a local MVD office and avoid waiting in line when applying for a travel ID, taking a road test, renewing a driver license, 
Services available at azmvdnow.gov. Vehicle Registration Renewal Permanent Placard Renewal Replacement Driver License Slash ID Permit Test at Home Emission Slash Registration Check Prepaid Voucher Title Viewer Driver License Reinstatement Insurance Update and Vehicle Reinstatement MVD Office Appointments Address Slash Email Change 30-Day General Use Permit Duplicate Vehicle Registration Fleet Registration Renewal Personalized Slash Specialty Plates Restricted Use 3-Day Permit Vehicle Sold Notice View Plate Credit Plate Refund Voter Registration Tab Replacement DA Insured Certificate Organ Donor Registration Motor Vehicle Record Title and Registration or Driver Record Vehicle Fee Recap Insurance Verification Off-Highway Vehicle Decal Motor Vehicle Lean Inquiry Third-Party Services Third-Party Providers are authorized to offer most MVD Title, Registration, and Driver License services. They often offer convenient extended hours on weekends and evenings. Convenience Fees Apply MVD monitors the quality of third-party work to ensure it meets state operational standards. For a list of MVD third-party offices, visit az.gov slash MVD locations. Driver Education Services MVD's authorized third-party driver training schools offer education and behind-the-wheel training for new drivers and for those who wish to brush up on their driving skills. The schools are required to teach MVD's training curriculum based on national standards. MVD, in collaboration with the Arizona Department of Education, also approves high school driver education programs. Traffic Survival School Program The Traffic Survival School Program is designed for drivers who have convictions for serious driving violations, have an accumulation of points on their driving record or are at risk of having their driving privilege suspended. The program's goal is to change or modify risky or unsafe driving behavior. Traffic survival schools are licensed by the Arizona Chapter of the National Safety Council, NSC. NSC qualifies instructors to teach the MVD-approved curriculum. A list of authorized traffic survival schools can be found online at az.gov slash mvd. Vehicle Inspections Vehicle inspections match the vehicle identification number, VIN, to the vehicle ownership documents to determine the identity of the vehicle's owner and, in some cases, to verify that the vehicle is properly equipped for highway use. Third-party providers are authorized by MVD to perform Level I inspections. If necessary, vehicles are referred to MVD for a Level II or Level III inspection. Fees at MVD Offices Operator or Motorcycle License Ages 16 to 39 $25 40 to 44 $20 45 to 49 $15 50 and over and 5 year $10 Limited License $10 Instruction Permit $7 Motorcycle Endorsement $7 Restricted Instruction Permit $7 Replacement Driver License $12 Replacement Instruction Permit $2 Out-of-State Driver License Skill Test $15 Out-of-State Vision Screening $5 Travel Driver License $25 Identification Card, ID Ages 0 to 64 $12 65 and over no fee Replacement Identification Card $12 Travel Identification Card $25 Commercial Driver License, CDL For Commercial Driver License Fees, please refer to the Commercial Driver License Manual or az.gov slash mvd Motor Vehicle Record Uncertified 39 Month $3 Certified 5 Year $5 Other Fees Abandoned Vehicle Fee $500 Abandoned Vehicle Fee on federal land, $600. Returned check fee $25. If your license is revoked, suspended, or cancelled, you may be required to pay another application fee, 
in addition to a reinstatement fee. Tips for faster service. Depending on your transaction. Visit azmvdnow.gov to determine whether your transaction can be completed online. Visit az.gov slash mvd to complete an application for an ID, driver license, or title. Visit azmvdnow.gov to schedule an appointment for a road test, travel credential, or driver license renewal. Avoid the first two days and the last two days of the month and the day after a holiday. In addition, most offices are closed until noon on the second Wednesday of each month. Bring your out-of-state driver license it will be used as a secondary form of identification and may waive the written slash road test. Bring required identification. Bring your out-of-state title, registration, and license plates. Have your vehicle identification number, VIN, handy. In addition to cash, most fees may be paid by credit card, cashier's check, or money order. Please make your cashier's check or money order payable to, Motor Vehicle Division. Name and address changes. You are required by law to notify MVD within 10 days of any change to your name or address. If you do not report a change, you may not receive renewal notices or other correspondence concerning your driver license or vehicle records and you may be cited by law enforcement. You may report a change of address online at azmvdnow.gov. For an address change, Provide your full name, and new address with zip code, plus your driver license number, date of birth and the last four digits of your social security number. If you wish to have your new address displayed on your credential, you may apply and purchase a replacement license. MVD's computer system links all of your MVD records together. When you submit a change of address, we will update your driver license or identification card record and each vehicle record for which you are listed as the first registered owner. To complete a name change, you may visit any MVD office or an authorized third-party office that offers driver license services. You will need to present appropriate identification in both your new and previous names. If you wish to show your new name on your license, you may apply for a replacement license. All names must be verifiable with Social Security Administration records. Military Personnel Information Military personnel based in Arizona who qualify for an exemption under the Soldiers and Sailors Relief Act are not considered Arizona residents. Upon discharge, military personnel may work in Arizona for up to 90 days, without obtaining an Arizona driver license, if all of the following are met. Principal residence is in another state or country. Possess a valid driver license issued by another state or country. Operate a vehicle requiring a Class D driver license. Is an employee, agent, or consultant of an organization that operates in Arizona and at least one other state or country. Visit our website at az.gov mvd for information on a five-year driver license and vehicle services available to military personnel. Veteran Designation A veteran designation on an Arizona driver license, instruction permit or identification card is available to U.S. military veterans or active duty service members. The word veteran will be printed on the front of the driver license, instruction permit, or ID in blue lettering. A new application and photo are required and standard transaction fees apply. For a full listing of acceptable documentation the division may accept as proof of veteran status, please visit our website az.gov slash mvd. Motor Vehicle Records You may obtain your driving or motor vehicle record online at azmvdnow.gov or by completing a motor vehicle record request. Form number 46-4416 at az.gov slash mvd and visiting any mvd or authorized third-party office. You will be required to show identification. Arizona's Driver License Arizona Revised Statutes, Section 2831-53, D, provides that the Motor Vehicle Division, MVD, must not issue or renew a driver license or identification, ID, card for a person who does not submit proof satisfactory to MVD that the applicant's presence in the United States is authorized under federal law. MVD is required to determine that each applicant meets the requirements of the law. Identification requirements may change without notice. 
Road Test You may now schedule an appointment to complete a road test. It is highly encouraged that you schedule an appointment online to ensure you are able to take the test when you go to an office. You may schedule an appointment at azmvdnow.gov for a time convenient for you. To get the earliest appointment possible, be sure to check multiple locations. Visit azmvdnow.gov for more information regarding what is needed to take the road test or to schedule your road test appointment. If a road test is required, you may drive a test route that has a variety of traffic situations. An examiner will ride with you in your vehicle and give you directions to follow. You will be observed and graded on specific actions and on your general ability to safely operate the vehicle. Road tests may be suspended due to extreme weather or safety conditions. Before you can take the road test, you will have to show that you understand the meaning of Arizona traffic signs. You will also have to respond to the following directions in English. Stop. Slow down. Change lanes left slash right. Drive straight ahead. Turn left slash right at the next street, corner, stop sign, or traffic light. Does your speedometer work? Fasten your seat belt. You must provide the vehicle to be used for the test. The vehicle must be in good operating condition, functioning brakes, brake lights, turn signals and horn, a windshield with no cracks, both inside and outside rear view mirrors, and tires that are in good condition. Passenger and driver side windows must also be operational. The passenger and driver door must open and close properly. You must show proof of current registration and current automobile liability insurance. If your vehicle is a 1972 model or newer, it must be equipped with seat belts, and these belts must be properly fastened and adjusted. Vehicle Insurance Every motor vehicle operated on the roadways of this state must be covered by an insurance liability policy issued by a company that is licensed to do business in Arizona. The policy must be an Arizona-based policy that reflects where the vehicle is predominantly being operated. Minimum levels of financial responsibility for private passenger vehicles are $25,000 bodily injury liability for one person and $50,000 for two or more persons. $15,000 property damage liability. It is important that you verify that the vehicle identification number, VIN, supplied by your insurance company matches the VIN on your vehicle registration. If it does not match, ask your insurance company to resubmit the correct VIN. You must have proof of current insurance in the vehicle when operating the vehicle. Law enforcement officers will ask you for proof of insurance at the time of traffic stops or crashes. Insurance companies notify MVD of all policy cancellations, non-renewals, and new policies. If your insurance company sends MVD a notice that your policy is no longer active, we will send you an inquiry to verify insurance status. Failure to maintain proper insurance with a correct VIN on file with MVD could lead to the suspension of your vehicle registration and slash or driver license. To verify your insurance coverage on file with MVD, please visit azmvdnow.gov and click on Manage Insurance. National Driver Register Arizona is a member of the National Driver Register, a nationwide computer system providing information about problem drivers. When you apply for an Arizona driver license, your information is checked against this system. If you have outstanding or unresolved actions in another state, an Arizona license will not be issued. If you provide false information, your Arizona driver license may be cancelled. Resident Definition State law requires that you obtain an Arizona driver license and registration immediately if any one of the following applies. If you Work in Arizona, other than for seasonal agricultural work. Place children in school without paying the tuition rate of a non-resident. Have a business with an office in Arizona that bases and operates vehicles in this state. Obtain a state license or pay school tuition fees at the same rate as an Arizona resident. Have a business that operates vehicles to transport good or passengers within Arizona. Remain in Arizona for a total of seven months or more during any calendar year, regardless of your permanent residence. Are registered to vote in this state.
An out-of-state student enrolled with seven or more semester hours is not considered a resident, even if employed. Voter Registration You may submit a voter registration form at the same time you apply for a driver license or ID card by completing the voter registration portion of the driver license slash ID card application. You are not required to register to vote in order to obtain a license. If you decline to register to vote, the fact that you have declined will remain confidential. If you do register to vote, the application will remain confidential and will be used only for registration purposes. Submitting a false voter registration is a Class 6 felony. To register, you must be all of the following. 18 years of age or older, on or before. The next general election date. A United States citizen. A resident of Arizona. Have not been convicted of a felony, unless your civil rights have been restored. Have not been adjudicated incompetent. You may also register to vote online at servicearizona.com or by completing a separate voter registration form, which can be obtained at an MVD office or by calling 602-542-8683 or toll-free 1.877.The vote. You must be registered to vote 29 days before an election in order to qualify to vote in the upcoming election. There is no fee to register vote. If you change your address, you must re-register to vote. You may register online at servicearizona.com. Organ Donation Program A donor registry has been established in Arizona. To indicate your decision to be a donor, simply visit servicearizona.com and click on the Organ Donor logo to register online or call 1.800.94.donor. The application for a driver license or identification card includes a box for you to check if you would like to be added to the Donate Life AZ registry as an organ and tissue donor. Medical Condition Indicator Space is provided on your license to indicate medical conditions that may require immediate attention. You must present a statement about the medical condition, signed by a licensed physician or registered nurse practitioner to obtain a medical code on your license. Proof of Social Security Number State and federal laws require you provide proof of a valid Social Security Number. Your Social Security Number will be used to verify your identity and to comply with child support laws. It will not be used as your driver license number. Classes of Licenses Licenses are issued by Class, Class G, Graduated, Class D, Operator, Class M, Motorcycle, and Class A. B, C, Commercial. If the Class M license is combined with any other class of license, it will be added as an endorsement on the back of the current license. Instruction Permit If you are at least 15 years and 6 months of age you may be issued a graduated and slash or a motorcycle instruction permit. You must be at least 18 for an operator permit. Graduated or operator permit, you must be accompanied by a Class A, B. C or D licensed driver at least 21 years of age, who occupies the seat beside you. These permits are valid for 12 months. Motorcycle Permit You are prohibited from carrying passengers or operating a motorcycle on freeways or interstate highways between sunset and sunrise, at any time when there is not enough light to clearly see persons or vehicles at a distance of 500 feet. The motorcycle permit is valid for seven months and can be renewed only one time within a 24-month period. To practice taking the written test, please visit our website at az.gov mvd. Graduated License, Class G A graduated driver license is issued to an applicant who is at least 16, but less than 18, years of age and is valid to operate any vehicle that does not require a motorcycle or commercial license. Restrictions for the first six months, a driver with a graduated driver license shall not drive a motor vehicle between the hours of midnight and 5 a.m. unless a parent or legal guardian with a valid Class A, B, C or D license occupies the front passenger seat or driving directly to or from a sanctioned school-sponsored activity, place of employment, a sanctioned religious activity or a family emergency. For the first six months, a driver with a graduated driver license shall not drive a motor vehicle containing more than one passenger under the age of 18, unless 
The passengers are the teen driver's siblings or The teen driver is accompanied by a parent or legal guardian with a valid Class A, B, C or D driver license who occupies the front passenger seat. Applicants will be required to pass the division's written test before being issued an Arizona instruction permit. This does not apply to commercial learners' permits. Arizona will give applicants credit for the time they have held their instruction permit in another state. An applicant for a graduated license must have held an Arizona instruction permit for at least six months. The permit must be valid at the time of application. An applicant must also have satisfactorily completed an Arizona driver education program approved by MVD or the parent or guardian must certify in writing that the applicant has completed at least 30 hours of supervised driving practice, including at least 10 hours at night. An applicant holding a current and valid out-of-state driver license may be exempt from the driver education slash driving practice and instruction permit requirements. The holder of a graduated license is not required to obtain an operator license at age 18, but may choose to obtain one. Penalties If you receive a citation, you may be eligible to attend the Arizona Supreme Court's Defensive Driving Program. Please read the information provided with your citation carefully for information about your options. The following penalties are for drivers who are under age 18, have a graduated driver license, and are convicted of a traffic violation. First conviction of a traffic violation. Must attend traffic survival school. Violation goes on driving record. Second conviction of a traffic violation. Three month suspension of driving privilege. Violation goes on driving record. Third conviction of a traffic violation. Six month suspension of driving privilege. Violation goes on driving record. There are additional penalties for violations of curfew and passenger restrictions, including fines and mandatory extension of the six-month restricted driving period. Suspension of driving privilege results for a third conviction of curfew and slash or passenger violations, convictions of other violations including alcohol-related convictions. Parent slash guardian approval for Applicants under 18 If you are under 18, your application for an instruction permit or driver license must be signed by at least one adult. The adult will be responsible for any negligence or willful misconduct when you are driving. The application must be signed by one natural-slash-adoptive parent, if married to the other natural-slash-adoptive parent. Both natural-slash-adoptive parents, if not married to each other, but share joint custody. One natural slash adoptive parent with sole custody. Legal guardian, proof required. Foster parent living with the minor, proof required, or. Employer of the minor, parents' death certificates must be shown. The signatures must be witnessed by an MVD agent or by a notary public. Signatures obtained for an instruction permit will be required again for a driver license. The person who signed the application for the minor, as well as the person with responsibility for the minor, may cancel the minor's license. The license may be cancelled by submitting a driver license slash ID cancellation request available online, at any driver license office, or by sending a notarized letter authorizing the cancellation to Motor Vehicle Division, P.O. Box 2100, Mail Drop 533M, Phoenix, AZ. 85001 indicate the license number, full name, and date of birth of the person whose license is to be cancelled. Selective Service Registration Federal law requires that every male United States citizen and male alien residing in the United States or its territories must register with the U.S. Selective Service System within 30 days of his 18th birthday. Arizona law requires that by submitting an application for an original, renewal or reinstatement driver license or identification card, Male applicants under 26 years of age consent to registration with the Selective Service as part of the application process. When submitting an application for a duplicate driver license or identification card, male applicants under 26 years of age have the option to consent to registration as part of the application process. Registering with Selective Service does not mean that you are joining the military. 
registration provides the federal government with an accurate list of males who might be called to military service if a return to the draft is authorized by Congress and the President. If you are 18 to 25 years of age, registration information will immediately be sent to Selective Service. If you are under 18, information will be stored and automatically sent to the Selective Service when you reach age 18. Selective Service will send you a registration acknowledgement card when your registration is complete. For more information, call Selective Service toll-free at 1-888-655-1825 or sss.gov. Operator License, Class D An operator license allows you to drive any vehicle that does not require a motorcycle or commercial license. You must be at least 18 years of age to apply for an operator license. Motorcycle License, Class M A motorcycle license or endorsement is required to drive a motorcycle or motor. Driven Cycle You must be at least 16 to apply for a motorcycle license. An applicant for a motorcycle license or endorsement who is under 18 must have held an Arizona motorcycle instruction permit for at least six months. An applicant must also have satisfactorily completed a motorcycle driver education program that is approved by MVD or the parent or guardian must certify in writing that the applicant has completed at least 30 hours of supervised motorcycle driving practice. An applicant holding an out-of-state motorcycle license or endorsement may be exempt from the driver education slash driving practice and instruction permit requirements. For additional information, see the Motorcycle Operator Manual, available online at az.gov slash mvd or any mvd or third-party office. Commercial Driver License, Class A, B or C A commercial driver license, CDL is required for operating a commercial motor vehicle grouped by the following classes. Class A, any combination of vehicles with a gross combination weight rating, GCWR, of 26,001 or more pounds, provided the GVWR of the vehicle, S, being towed is in excess of 10,000 pounds. Class B, any single vehicle with a GVWR of 26,001 pounds or more or any such vehicle towing a vehicle not in excess of 10,000 pounds GVWR. Class C, any single vehicle, or combination of vehicles, that meets neither the definition of Group A nor that of Group B, but is designed to transport 16 or more passengers including the driver, or is used in the transportation of hazardous materials requiring placarding. A passenger, P, or a hazardous materials endorsement, HME, is required to Obtain a Class C CDL. For more information and requirements, please see our website as.gov slash mvd or obtain a copy of the CDL Driver License Manual. Identification, ID, Card The identification card is available to all ages, including infants, for $12. Persons over the age of 65 or anyone receiving federal supplemental security income disability checks receive the card free of charge. You may not possess an identification card and a driver license at the same time. An Arizona ID card with a photo allows law enforcement agencies to rapidly distribute your child's information and photograph in the event of an Amber Alert. A new photo will be needed as your child grows and changes. Photo updates are available at MVD offices. A duplicate identification card with the new photo costs $12. What do I need to bring to MVD? Before you visit, complete your application for a driver license or identification card online at azmvdnow.gov. The website will also assist you with determining what documents you may need to bring with you for your visit. For more information on driver license or identification cards, please visit az.gov slash driver hyphen services. Travel DL slash ID The Arizona Travel ID is the credential that complies with the Federal Real ID Act of 2005. The Travel ID is available as both a driver license and identification card. The Travel ID will serve as valid identification to pass through airport security to board commercial aircraft as well as access some restricted areas in federal facilities nuclear power plants and military bases. Current Arizona credentials will be sufficient until May 3, 2023. 
The Federal Real ID Act of 2005 requires Arizona to distinguish between compliant and non-compliant credentials and clearly state on all non-federally compliant credentials not for federal identification. All federally compliant credentials will be printed with a yellow star shape insignia near the upper right corner of the credential. The travel ID cost is $25 for first-time issuance and renewals. In most instances, it will be valid for eight years. The travel ID can be obtained at MVD offices and authorized third-party driver license providers. For more information on locations, please visit az.gov slash MVD locations. Required for a travel DL slash ID. One of the following is required. Valid, unexpired U.S. passport or passport card. Original or certified copy of a birth certificate filed with a state office of vital statistics or equivalent agency in the individual state of birth, hospital records slash certificates and California certified abstracts of birth are not acceptable. Consular report of birth abroad issued by the U.S. Department of State Form FS-240, DL-1350 or FS-545 Valid Unexpired Permanent Resident Card Form I-551 issued by DHS or INS. Unexpired Employment Authorization Document, EAD, issued by DHS, Form I-766 or Form I-688B. Unexpired Foreign Passport with a valid unexpired U.S. visa affixed, accompanied by the Approval I-94 form documenting the applicant's most recent admittance into the U.S. Certified of naturalization issued by DHS Form N-550 or Form N-570. Certificate of Citizenship Form N-560 or Form N-561, issued by DHS. Social Security Number. A valid Social Security Number must be provided. Proof of Residency. Two documents or mail issued from a business, organization, or government agency that contain. Applicant Name. Physical residential address replacement credential information If you possess a regular and a federally compliant credential you will be required to purchase a duplicate of both credentials should your driver license or identification card become lost, stolen, destroyed, or unreadable. All fees related to duplicate identification cards or driver licenses apply. Replacement travel credential You may obtain a duplicate license for $12 if you meet one of the following criteria. Your Arizona driver license or identification card is lost, stolen, destroyed, or becomes unreadable. If your license has been lost or stolen and you have reason to believe someone else is using it, the incident should be reported to your local police department as an identity theft. Your address or name changes. You wish to update your photo. You wish to remove your social security number from your license. You wish to convert a graduated license to an under-21 driver license. You wish to convert an under-21 license to a regular driver license. You must provide two acceptable items of identification. If your name has changed, you will need to present identification in both your new and previous names, i.e., court document. A replacement license may be obtained online at azmvdnow.gov. If your license is more than 12 years old, you must visit an MVD office to obtain the duplicate so that your photo may be updated. Applying for a title and registration When you buy a vehicle, Arizona law requires that you apply for a title within 15 days of purchase or transfer. If your vehicle was registered in another state and you wish to operate it in Arizona, you must register it here as soon as you become an Arizona resident, see resident definition on page 7. Most vehicles may be registered for either one or two year periods. Some vehicles must be emission tested every year and are, therefore, not eligible for two year registration. A five year registration option is offered for vehicles that do not require an emissions test during the five years of the registration period. Section 1 Before you drive, preparation Your vehicle must have no defective or missing equipment. The following equipment must be in working order. Brakes. Speedometer. Turn signals. Windshield, intact. Horn. Tires in good condition. Seat belts. Driver and front passenger side windows. 
Emergency Flashers Prior to starting your vehicle, adjust your seat, steering wheel, rear view, and outside mirrors. Before putting the vehicle in motion, check your turn signals and brakes to ensure they are in working order. Tire Safety Arizona's seasonal extreme driving conditions make tire maintenance very important. Many tire professionals offer free inspections. This is the best way to ensure your tires can handle the intense summer heat, the summer monsoon storms, and winter snow and ice in the high country. There are some basic checks that you can do yourself. Tire Pressure Find the recommended psi, pounds per square inch, for your vehicle, typically on the door jam. Use a tire pressure gauge to check the reading and either add air or let it out as needed. Tread Depth you can check for wear by using the penny test. Select a point on your tire where the tread appears to be lowest and place Abraham Lincoln's head into one of the grooves. Part of Lincoln's head should be covered by the tread. If not, it may be time to replace your tires. Arizona Safety Belt Law, Buckle Up Arizona Each front seat occupant of a motor vehicle per federal and state motor vehicle safety standards must either have the lap and shoulder belt properly adjusted and fastened while the vehicle is in motion, or if only a lap belt is installed where the occupant is sitting, the lap belt must be properly adjusted and fastened while the vehicle is in motion. The operator of a motor vehicle must require all passengers under the age of 16 years to buckle up. A combination lap slash shoulder belt greatly reduces your chances of being seriously injured in a motor vehicle crash. The lap belt prevents ejection and protects your lower body. The shoulder belt keeps your head and chest from striking the dashboard or windshield. In vehicles with automatic shoulder belts and manual lap belts, it is extremely important to buckle the lap belt. Child Car Seat Safety Information Buckle Up Children Seat belts are not designed for children. Arizona law requires that a person shall not operate a motor vehicle on the highways in this state when transporting a child who is under 5 years of age unless that child is properly secured in a child restraint system. Additionally, children between 5 and 8 years of age are required to be in a child restraint system until they are a minimum of 4 feet, 9 inches tall. If you see an unrestrained child in a moving vehicle, Please call 1.800.505.baby with the vehicle plate number, city, and location of the child in the vehicle. Drivers transporting more than one child under 8 years of age must secure as many children in child restraint systems as reasonable given the size of the passenger area and number of passengers being transported. Child restraint systems must meet U.S. Department of Transportation safety standards and must be used by following manufacturers and automobile manufacturers' instructions. Airbags can save lives and prevent serious injuries, but they are unsafe for children under 12 years of age. Children age 12 years and under should never ride in the front seat of a car. If a child must ride in the front seat of a car, please turn the front passenger side airbag off. Most newer vehicles are equipped with an on-slash-off switch. Governor's Office of Highway Safety For more information on safety issues, contact the Arizona Governor's Office of Highway Safety. In Phoenix call 602-255-3216, statewide call toll-free 1-877-355-3216, or online at azgoes.gov. Travel Information Service with a rapidly growing transportation system, travelers need current travel information fast. Dial 511 anytime, day or night for up-to-the-minute reports about traffic conditions and road closures. Transit. Airports. Tourism. Metro Region Quick Reports. Construction and Work Zones. Dial 511 and press the star key, asterisk to activate the system's touch tone mode and you will be guided through the available features. You may also use the voice activated prompts. When using voice activation, please listen to the entire introduction and reduce background noise. In addition, travel information is available via the internet at az511.com. 511 and az511.com are provided as free services by the Arizona Department of Transportation. Check the vehicle.
How safely you can drive also depends on the vehicle you are driving. It is the responsibility of drivers to make certain that the vehicles they drive are safe to operate. A vehicle that is unsafe costs more to operate than one that is maintained. A vehicle in good condition can give you an extra safety margin when you need it. Your vehicle may be required to have an emission inspection at an authorized inspection station. If the vehicle does not pass, you will be given 30 days to have the problem fixed and have a follow-up emission test recheck. Follow your vehicle owner's manual for routine maintenance. Some maintenance you can do yourself and some must be done by a qualified technician. A few simple checks will help prevent trouble on the road. All truck and trailers. Secure and cover loads. According to Arizona law, a person shall not drive or move a vehicle on a highway. Unless the vehicle is constructed or loaded in a manner to prevent any of its load from dropping, sifting, leaking or otherwise escaping from the vehicle. ARS 28-1098.A Required Equipment for Motor Vehicles Brakes Every motor vehicle must have brakes in good working condition. Cars and trucks must have both a foot brake and a parking brake. Each set of brakes must apply to at least two wheels. A motorcycle must have at least one brake that may be applied by hand or foot. Trailers of 3,000 pounds or more gross weight must be equipped with separate brakes. Safety belts Each front seat occupant of a motor vehicle manufactured after 1972 must have the seat belt properly fastened and adjusted while the vehicle is in motion. Child safety seats A child less than 8 years old must be properly secured in a child passenger restraint system while being transported in a vehicle in this state. Head restraints Seat back head restraints are designed to reduce the chance of whiplash injury in rear end crashes. If they are adjustable, they should be positioned to fit against the back of your head and to line up with the middle of the ear. Muffler Every motor vehicle must have a muffler in good working condition and in constant operation to prevent excessive pollution or unusual noise. It is against the law to use a muffler cutout, bypass or similar device. Air Pollution Control Motor vehicles of 1967 model year and newer must be equipped with an exhaust emissions system to help reduce air pollution. Also, the engine of every motor vehicle must be equipped to prevent the escape of excessive fumes and smoke. Windows and windshields Vehicles must have a windshield, without cracks, and windshield wipers that are in good working condition. Sun screening tint materials on windows and windshields are legal only within certain limits. Owners should make sure that the manufacturer or installer of the material complies with Arizona law. Rear view mirrors Every vehicle that is made or loaded so that the driver's view to the rear is blocked must have at least one outside driver side mirror that shows the view of the highway for at least 200 feet to the rear. Horns and warning devices A working horn that can be heard for 200 feet is required on your vehicle. Emergency vehicles may have a siren, whistle or bell. Red lights and flashers Flashing red warning lights are prohibited on the front of the vehicle, even those vehicles that are disabled, except on authorized emergency vehicles, school buses, and snow removal equipment. Hazard warning signal lights, emergency flashers, should be activated whenever your vehicle is stopped on the roadway or shoulder of the road. Section 2 Safe Driving Practices Defensive Driving Driving defensively will help protect your life and your driving record. Defensive driving means being constantly aware of the driving conditions, planning ahead, anticipating dangers and taking the right action so as not to come in contact with any obstacle or another vehicle. We all want to avoid crashes that could result in injury or even death. But, even when there is no injury, a crash means inconvenience and auto repair costs. It may also result in a court appearance and fines, as well as increased insurance rates. Attitude and Awareness Courtesy and consideration toward others are the most important driving attitudes you can develop. They are the key to safe driving. Concentration and alertness are other important elements. You must develop the habit of keeping your mind on driving. Driving when you are drowsy, or under emotional distress can be just as dangerous as driving while impaired. Foresight 
Foresight means being able to size up traffic situations as quickly as possible and being prepared to take corrective action. Safe driving requires exercising good judgment and recognizing the proper choices to make in any given traffic situation. Even the most experienced drivers make mistakes. Regardless of how many years you've been driving, at some point you will face equipment failures, bad weather conditions, unskilled drivers on the road, and drivers who ignore traffic regulations. The best way to prepare yourself for unpredictable events is to drive defensively. Always maintain good vision ahead and around your vehicle. Stay alert and be prepared to react to the unexpected. Obey speed limits and know when to slow down and stop for unexpected events. Always wear your safety belt. As a defensive driver, you should constantly look ahead of you and around you, and always check your mirrors. Be aware of the road conditions or possible hazards that lie in front, to the sides, and behind you. Knowledge and Experience The beginning driver should learn through instruction, observation, and practice. If you are not enrolled in a driver training program, ask an experienced, skilled, licensed driver for help. After you obtain your instruction permit, practice by starting your vehicle, moving out of your parked area, stopping, and maintaining vehicle control in a parking lot or other open area with little traffic. Practice will sharpen your basic skills and build your confidence. Experienced drivers, on the other hand, often face the problems of carelessness, overconfidence and bad driving habits that develop over time. Driving rules and techniques have changed over the years and the amount of traffic is constantly increasing. Your ability to adjust and adapt to changes will determine how safe a driver you really are. Your knowledge should include recognition of the hazards of driving and how to protect yourself, and others. A skill is a well-rehearsed driving strategy that involves anticipation, reaction, and the constant changing of the space between your vehicle and other vehicles. You must continually strive for improvement. Improvement can be measured in your elimination of risk-taking, your adherence to speed limits and your ability to take corrective action when necessary. Distractions it is your responsibility to pay full attention to your driving. Avoid distractions while driving, such as reading a GPS unit or road map, using a phone, texting or using other electronic handheld devices, searching for an item dropped on the seat, tending to children, fastening a safety belt while driving. Even minor distractions can take your attention away from driving. There is a potential crash in every minor distraction. Pull off the road safely and stop if you are going to use a cell phone or send slash receive a text message. While operating a motor vehicle, both hands should be on the steering wheel, allowing the driver full control of the vehicle. Arizona law prohibits holding or supporting a wireless device while driving. Drivers may not write or read any text-based communication while driving, and may not watch, record or broadcast video while driving. A wireless device may only be used while driving in order to report an emergency. Wireless devices may be used for hands-free or voice-to-text operations. Steering The proper way to stay in your lane of travel is to look well ahead and make only slight steering corrections as needed. Drivers tend to steer towards what they are looking at. When driving in a curve or turn, if you look generally to the outside of your lane of travel while in the curve, you are more likely stay within your lane. Only practice can teach you how to steer. Scanning Be alert and watch for cars, bicyclists, people, or animals that may cross your path. Such areas may include intersections, crosswalks, shopping centers, construction areas, and playgrounds. Keep your eyes moving and learn to read the road. To avoid the need for last-minute decision-making, look ahead for a distance of about one city block. When approaching an intersection, be sure to check both left and right before proceeding. By frequently checking the traffic behind you, you will know when someone is tailgating or moving up too quickly. Check your rear-view mirror often for the position of traffic behind you. When changing lanes, Check your side mirrors and turn your head and look over your shoulder to be sure that it is safe to proceed with the lane change. By knowing the speed and position of traffic on all four sides of your vehicle, 
you will be better able to make decisions quickly and safely. Positioning Vehicle Cushion of space around your vehicle. You can use the 3-6 second rule to determine if you have enough cushion between you and the vehicle you are following. When the vehicle ahead of you passes a certain point, such as a sign or overpass, count 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004. This takes about 4 seconds. If you pass the same point before you finish counting, you are following too closely. At faster speeds, the distance should be greater. At times you will need more than a 3 second cushion, e.g., poor road conditions. Give yourself 3 to 6 seconds for more cushion. The space between you and other vehicles gives you, and the other drivers, time to react in emergencies and avoid collisions. Create a space cushion around you by staying in the middle of your lane. Make sure there is enough room ahead and behind to pass or stop safely. Leave enough space between you and the car ahead of you to allow for a sudden stop. At high speeds, the distance your vehicle travels while you are reacting to a problem is greater, and your margin for error is less. If you are following too closely, you may not be able to stop in time. Most rear-end crashes are caused by following too closely. When sharing a lane with a bicycle, allow at least 3 feet of clearance between you and the bicycle. Moderate your speed. Help the driver behind you maintain a safe following distance by driving at a constant speed and signaling in advance whenever you are slowing or stopping. If another driver is following too closely, gradually slow down and give additional cushion between you and the vehicle in front of you. This additional space allows you to brake more slowly to accommodate the reaction time and braking of the vehicle that is tailgating you. When safe to do so, you can move to another lane to encourage the tailgater to pass. Remember, what you do can affect the driver behind you, especially if you must stop suddenly. Blind spots are areas on the left and right sides of your vehicle that are not visible in your mirror. Blind spots can occur when vehicles are parked too close to an intersection or when bushes, trees and buildings block your view. In situations like these, slowly inch your vehicle forward until you have a clear view. Then proceed when the way is clear. Avoid driving in someone else's blind spot. This can be just as dangerous as not checking your own. Speed up or drop back but never stay for an extended time in a blind spot area. Make sure your vehicle can be seen by other drivers. Do not rely on your mirrors alone to see. Other vehicles. Look over your shoulder to see if the way is clear before changing lanes. Entering slash crossing traffic. When entering the roadway from a side road or private drive, stop and wait for traffic to clear. Don't assume that a vehicle using a turn signal is actually going to make a turn, wait until after you see the other driver commit to the turn before entering the roadway. Communicating Anytime you plan to change directions, use your turn signals whether you are changing lanes, turning at an intersection, entering a freeway, pulling away from a curb or pulling off to the side of the road. Develop the habit of using your turn signals even when you do not see other vehicles on the road. The vehicle you do not see is the most dangerous one. Communicating means clearly showing other drivers and pedestrians what you plan to do early enough to avoid a collision. Here are some rules to follow. Signal at least 100 feet, approximately 4 seconds, before you turn so other drivers will have time to react. If you plan to turn beyond an intersection, do not signal until you are in the intersection, drivers in the intersection may pull into your path. After you complete your move, be sure your turn signal is off. Signaling Signaling lets other drivers know you are going to do something different and gives them time to react to your move. Signaling does not give you the right of way. Turns may be indicated using turn signals, hand signals, or both. The law designates which lanes and positions you must use when turning and requires you to signal at least 100 feet before you turn. You should always signal before you change lanes. Turn at an intersection or into a driveway or alley. Enter or leave a freeway. Pull away from the curb. Pull over to the side of the road. Slow down or stop suddenly, when using hand signals. Hand and turn signals are shown below. Right turn. 
left turn. Slow down slash stop. Passing. When you want to pass a vehicle traveling in the same direction, pass on the left. Signal that you are about to change lanes. Make sure you have time and room to get all the way in front of the vehicle you are passing without creating danger for vehicles coming toward you. Move into the left lane and pass the vehicle. When you can see the entire front or both headlights of the vehicle you passed in your rear view mirror, look over your shoulder to be sure the lane is clear, signal that you are changing lanes, then return to the lane on the right. This procedure also applies to passing slow-moving bicycles and mopeds. When another vehicle comes up behind you and sounds its horn or flashes its lights, move to the right when safe and let it pass. Never speed up when another vehicle is passing you. Passing on the right. Passing on the right is permitted only when it is safe and the driver of the other vehicle is turning left, never pass to the left of a driver who has signaled a left turn. An open highway is clearly marked for two or more lanes of vehicles moving in the same direction as you are going. You are in a business or residential district where the pavement is marked for two or more lanes of vehicles moving in the direction you are going. You must never pass on the right by driving off the paved or main portion of the roadway. Do not pass. You must not pass when There is a double solid line or a solid dividing line on the lane in which you are driving. Approaching a curve or the top of a hill where you cannot see ahead to be sure of safe passing. Approaching within 100 feet of a street crossing. Approaching within 100 feet of a railroad crossing. Within 100 feet of a bridge, tunnel, or underpass where your view is blocked. Roundabouts A roundabout is an intersection control device with traffic circulating around an island. Approaching vehicles must yield to the traffic in the circle. Always yield to pedestrians and bicyclists that are crossing the road. Always enter a roundabout to the right of the central island. Vehicles approaching the roundabout must yield right of way to vehicles in the roundabout. Know where you are headed know where you want to go as you approach the intersection. Follow the signs and get in the appropriate lane. How to drive in a roundabout. Slow down as you approach the intersection, roundabouts are designed for speeds of 15 to 20 miles per hour. Enter the roundabout when there is a gap in traffic. Once inside, do not stop. Follow directions on signs or pavement markings about which lane to use. You may exit at any street or continue around if you miss your exit. Yield vehicles in the roundabout have the right of way. Watch out for large trucks don't try to pass large trucks in the roundabout. Emergency vehicles proceed with caution in the roundabout when you see an emergency vehicle. Exit if you can, or pull over to the right. Pedestrians use crosswalks and use caution. Bicyclists be aware of traffic rules or walk your bike and use the crosswalks. As you approach the roundabout, slow down and yield until there is a safe gap before entering. When safe, enter and complete your turn or U-turn. Parking You must be sure that you are not in the way of traffic, obstructing visibility, or in an illegal parking zone when you park on a public roadway. International Symbol of Access This symbol, which appears on reserved parking signs, placards and license plates, is the international symbol of access for persons with disabilities. Parking spaces marked with this symbol are only to be used by a vehicle displaying a valid placard or license plate with this symbol, and only when transporting the person who was issued the placard or plate. It is illegal for anyone else to park in these spaces and may result in a fine. Backing up slash reversing Backing up or reversing your car is dangerous because it is hard for you to see behind you. Here are some rules you should follow whenever you have to back your car. Check behind your car before you get in. Children or small objects are hard to see from the driver's seat. Turn around so that you can look directly through the rear window. Do not depend on your mirrors. Back up slowly. Parallel parking. When parallel parking, be sure to continually check for oncoming traffic. Your ability to judge distances while controlling the speed of your vehicle is the key to completing this maneuver. To parallel park correctly. Check traffic behind you and signal that you are stopping. Stop when you are alongside the forward car and your car's back bumper lines up with the back bumper of the parked vehicle. 
Leave approximately 2 feet between you and the forward car. Shift into reverse. While looking over your right shoulder, back up slowly while turning the wheel sharply to the right. When your front bumper passes the rear bumper of the forward car, turn the wheel sharply to the left. Keep backing until parallel to the curb. Straighten the wheels and slowly pull forward. Parking on a hill. When you park on a downhill grade, turn your wheels toward the curb and set your parking brake. If you park on an uphill grade, turn your wheels to the left, let your car roll back until the right front wheel rests against the curb and stops. Set your parking brake. If there is no curb, turn the wheels to the right so that the car will roll away from the center of the road in the event the brakes fail. Always set your parking brake. Downhill, curb. Uphill, curb. Uphill, no curb. Emergency parking. If it is necessary to leave your vehicle parked on a highway or street, follow these rules. Pull onto the shoulder of the road as far away from traffic as possible. If there is a curb, pull your vehicle as close to the curb as possible. Set your parking brake, shift into park or leave the vehicle in gear, for manual transmission, and turn off the engine. Set out proper emergency signals. Stay with your vehicle if possible until assistance arrives. Lock your vehicle if you have to leave it. Prohibited parking. It is illegal to park. On a sidewalk. In front of a private or public driveway. Within the boundaries of an intersection. On a crosswalk or within 20 feet of a crosswalk at an intersection. On any freeway or interstate highway, except for an emergency. In any area with signs prohibiting parking. Within 15 feet of a fire hydrant. Within 50 feet of a railroad crossing. On a bridge or within a tunnel. In such a way that you create a hazard for other vehicles. Freeway driving. Freeways and interstate highways are designed to handle higher speed traffic safely. Entering a freeway. Traffic entering a freeway must yield right off way to traffic already on the freeway. Drivers entering the freeway are responsible for safely merging. Match the speed of your vehicle to the speed of traffic in the right lane of the freeway. Signal before you merge. Check traffic around you. When clear, merge carefully. Do not cross a solid line or drive through a gore area. See figure, A, above. Exiting a freeway. Be sure to signal before exiting the freeway. Most freeways have deceleration lanes to assist you in your exit. Use proper braking to allow for a smooth exit. Be sure to maintain adequate space, space cushion, between your vehicle and the vehicle ahead when exiting in heavy traffic. Do not cross a solid line. See figure, B, above. A divided highway slash freeway has separate roadways for traffic in opposite directions, often with multiple lanes on each side. Some highways intersect other roads and are controlled by traffic signals. Others are controlled access, which means they have no signals or intersections, you enter and exit these highways using ramps. These are called expressways or freeways and the points at which you can enter or exit are known as intersections. Entering and exiting the highway. Make sure you are in the proper lane well in advance so you can safely enter or exit the highway. Be sure to signal your exit before you reach the exit ramp. Yield the right of way to drivers already on the highway. As you approach and enter a highway travel lane, increase your speed to match that of vehicles already on the road. If you miss your exit, do not stop. Never back up on a highway. Get off the highway at the next exit and look for signs showing you how to rejoin the road in the other direction. Lane Use the right lane is used for entering and exiting, and for slow traffic. The left lane is used by higher speed traffic. Avoid the right lane of a freeway during rush hour. This will leave room for vehicles entering and exiting. Be alert for other vehicles attempting to merge into your lane, and use proper signals to let other drivers know if you are changing lanes. Do not exceed the posted speed limits. Avoid tailgating, following the car ahead of you too closely. Gore area. It is against the law to drive over or park in any part of a gore area. 
A gore area is the space between a through roadway and an entrance or exit ramp. See figures A and B on page 27. Stopping on the freeway. If you need assistance, pull over onto the right shoulder as far as possible. Avoid stopping your vehicle on or near freeway ramps. To signal for assistance on the freeway, turn on your emergency flashers or raise the hood of the car. To signal after dark, turn on your inside dome light and slash or set out flares or portable warning signals. Wait for help. Do not walk along the freeway. While driving on the freeway, watch for disabled vehicles. If you approach a disabled vehicle, reduce your speed, move over, and proceed around the disabled vehicle with caution, see page 31 move over AZ. Freeway Restrictions High Occupancy Vehicle, HOV, Lanes HOV lanes are indicated by white diamonds in the roadway as seen here. On the freeway, you may not drive a vehicle carrying fewer than two persons, including the driver, in an HOV lane at the posted times Monday through Friday. At those times, the HOV lanes are restricted to carpool vehicles, motorcycles, buses or vehicles displaying alternative fuel or hybrid license plates, below. A motorist who violates this restriction is subject to substantial fines and penalties. Energy Efficient License Plate Alternative Fuel License Plate Always signal and use caution when merging across the solid white line into and out of the HOV lane. Other Freeway Restrictions Do not Drive over or across any median or divided highway separation. Make a U-turn. Change lanes without signaling. Drive onto the freeway, except at an on-ramp. Park or stop on the freeway, except in specially provided areas. Parking on the shoulder of the freeway is prohibited, except in case of emergency. Back up if you miss an exit, you must go on to the next exit. Driving on the highway. Make sure your vehicle is in good operating condition and can maintain highway speeds. Stay to the right and only use the left lane for passing. If you are traveling on a highway with three lanes, treat the far right lane as a slower speed through lane and the far left lane as the passing lane. Drive in the middle of your lane, staying between the lines. Use your rear view mirror and your directional signals when changing lanes. Section 3 Roadway and Vehicle Knowledge The flow of traffic on our streets and highways is controlled by various signal lights, traffic signs, and pavement markings. You must fully understand their meaning in order to drive safely. There are also various requirements concerning vehicle equipment that you should know. This section provides information about these important basics. Signal lights Signal lights, red, yellow, and green, are placed at many intersections to regulate the direction and flow of traffic. These traffic lights apply to pedestrians, bicycle, and moped riders, as well as to motorists. You must obey the signal lights unless a police officer is directing traffic to do otherwise. Red, red means stop. This signal means stop. You must come to a complete stop before you reach the intersection, stop line, or crosswalk. Remain stopped for as long as the light stays red. Where not prohibited by signs, a right turn may be made after coming to a complete stop, when motor traffic and pedestrian traffic are clear. Yellow, yellow means caution. This signal means caution. A steady yellow light is a warning that the light is about to turn red. If you have not entered the intersection, you should come to a safe stop. If you are already in the intersection, you should continue moving and clear it safely. Speeding up to beat the light is illegal and could cause a crash. Green, green means go, if clear. This signal means go. You may go through an intersection in the direction indicated by the signal if the roadway is clear. Check left and right for cross traffic before entering the intersection to avoid a collision with a red light runner. Yield to any vehicle that is already in the intersection when the light changed. Flashing red light. A flashing red light has the same meaning as a stop sign. You must come to a full stop, then proceed with caution when the roadway is clear. Flashing yellow light. A flashing yellow light means you should slow down and proceed with caution if the roadway is clear. 
Red arrow. A lighted red arrow means that you may not turn in the direction of the arrow. You must stop and wait for the green signal to appear before turning. Yellow arrow. A yellow arrow warns that the light is about to change to red. If you have not entered the intersection, you must stop and wait for a green arrow. If you are already in the intersection, you should continue your turn. And clear the intersection safely. Flashing yellow arrow. A flashing yellow arrow means you should slow down and turn with caution if the roadway is clear. Yield the right of way to any oncoming vehicle or pedestrian before making your turn. Green arrow. A green arrow appearing alone or with another signal light means that you may proceed in the direction of the arrow, if you are in the proper lane and the roadway is clear. Inoperative signal lights. When approaching an intersection with an inoperative traffic control signal, treat it as you would a four-way stop. Come to a complete stop before entering the intersection and then proceed when the roadway is clear. If two vehicles arrive at the intersection at about the same time, both must stop and the driver of the vehicle on the left must yield the right of way to the driver on the right. Figure A, how to enter a freeway. Figure B, how to exit a freeway. Rules of the road T intersections. At a T intersection, the driver on the street which ends must yield the right of way to vehicles on the cross street. Vehicle number one has the right of way. Controlled intersections. You must obey the traffic signals and signs. Yield the right of way to other vehicles as directed. Do not assume it is safe to proceed just because you have the right of way. Check for traffic and pedestrians. Stop without pavement markings. Stop near the intersecting roadway where you have a clear view of approaching traffic. Crosswalk without a stop line. Stop at the nearest crosswalk line. Crosswalk with a stop line. Stop at the stop line. Stop line only. Stop at the line. Uncontrolled intersections. When approaching an intersection with an inoperative traffic control signal or no traffic lights, stop signs, or yield signs, treat it as you. Would a four-way stop. Come to a complete stop before entering the intersection and then proceed when the roadway is clear. If two vehicles arrive at the intersection at about the same time, both must stop and the driver of the vehicle on the left must yield the right of way to the driver on the right. Vehicle number one to your right has the right of way. Right of way. The law requires certain vehicles to yield the right of way to other vehicles. The law does not actually give the right of way to any particular motorist, it just states who must yield. No one is allowed to take the right of way if taking it means a crash may result. Pedestrians. You must yield the right of way to pedestrians crossing the street in any marked or unmarked crosswalk. When the light turns green, you must still yield to pedestrians and vehicles in intersections. The law also requires vehicles to come to a complete stop at any school crossing when the crosswalk is occupied by any person. You may not pass another vehicle that is stopped for a pedestrian, even if you have a clear lane or a green traffic signal. In the interest of safety, if you see persons crossing any street, give them the right of way. Pedestrian Activated Signals For pedestrian crosswalks with electronic signals, be mindful of the following indicators. Flashing yellow pedestrian has activated signal. Solid yellow prepare to stop. Solid red lights stop. Pedestrian is in the crosswalk. Flashing red lights stop. Then proceed with caution after pedestrian finishes crossing the driver's half of the roadway. All lights blank proceed with caution if crosswalk is clear. Important rules for pedestrians. There may be times when you are the pedestrian crossing the road. Keep in mind, in many instances and circumstances, it's easier for you to see an approaching vehicle than it is for the driver of the vehicle to see you. This is especially true at night, in low-light conditions such as dusk and dawn and in inclement weather. Don't assume an approaching vehicle sees you and will yield to you. Use crosswalks when provided or cross at an intersection. Make eye contact with the drivers of approaching vehicles whenever possible. Look before you step into a roadway. Even at a crosswalk, drivers must be given time to perceive and react to you stepping into the roadway. Avoid distractions, 
such as using phones or wearing headphones slash earbuds, while crossing the road. Cross in a well-lit location at night. Follow all traffic rules, signs, and signals that may be present where you are crossing. Alleys and driveways. When entering the roadway from an alley or driveway, you must stop before reaching the sidewalk. Yield the right of way to pedestrians and approaching vehicles. Left turn. When you are preparing to turn left, you must yield the right of way to any oncoming vehicle, bicycle, or pedestrian. Oncoming vehicle number one has the right of way. U turn. U turns are permitted as long as the movement can be made safely, does not interfere with other traffic, and is not prohibited by signs. When making a U turn, you must yield to approaching traffic and make the turn only when it is safe to do so. Red light running. If you receive a citation for running a red light, or another civil traffic violation, you may be eligible to attend the Arizona Supreme Court's defensive driving program. Please read the information provided with your citation carefully for information about your options. If you run a red light, or a flashing red light, and receive a traffic citation, upon conviction of that violation you will be required to attend traffic survival school. The Motor Vehicle Division will be notified of your successful completion of traffic survival school, and no further court appearance is required. If you run a red light and cause a crash that results in life-threatening injuries to another driver or passenger, you may be fined up to $500 and your driving privilege may be suspended for three months. Additionally, you may be ordered to perform community service. If you cause a crash that results in the death of another driver or passenger, you may be fined up to $1,000 and your driving privilege may be suspended for six months. Additionally, you may be ordered to perform community service. MVD is required by law to order the completion of Traffic Survival School, TSS, for every red light conviction reported by the courts. Points are assessed and will appear on your driver record. Payment of the fine is assuming responsibility for the violation and is reported to MVD as a conviction. Failure to complete the course results in an indefinite suspension of your driving privilege. Emergency Vehicles Always be alert for emergency vehicles, especially at intersections. When a police car, fire engine, ambulance, or other emergency vehicle approaches using a siren, lights or other warning devices, you must yield the right of way. Move to the right side of the road and stop until the vehicle has passed. On a four-lane highway with at least two lanes proceeding in the same direction as the approaching vehicle, proceed with due caution. Yield the right of way by making a lane change into a lane not adjacent to that of the emergency vehicle. If changing lanes is not possible or unsafe, proceed with due caution and reduce the speed of your vehicle. Following emergency vehicles. When an emergency vehicle such as police, fire, or ambulance, with flashing lights and slash or giving an audible signal approaches, a driver shall yield the right of way, move to the right and stop their vehicle until the emergency vehicle has passed. The driver shall maintain a distance of at least 500 feet behind a fire department vehicle responding to an emergency and at least 300 feet behind a police vehicle responding to an emergency. Do not drive into or park your vehicle within the block where the emergency vehicle has stopped to respond to the emergency. The Move Over Law, 28 to 775 Argentine pesos, requires motorists to move over one lane to create a safe margin of space when driving by any vehicle with flashing lights pulled to the side of a road or highway. If it's not safe or possible to move over, motorists must slow down and use caution. This law pertains to all vehicles pulled over with flashing lights, including emergency response and lay enforcement vehicles, tow trucks, highway maintenance vehicles and private vehicles. It applies to all freeways and other multiple lane highways, city roads, and streets. Learn more online at moveoveraz.org. Funerals Drivers must yield the right of way to any vehicle that is part of a funeral procession being led by a funeral escort vehicle flashing a red or a blue light. School buses and school zones. When approaching a school bus that is picking up or dropping off passengers, you must come to a complete stop before reaching the bus, regardless of your direction of travel. 
A school bus will have alternating flashing lights and a mechanical stop sign arm extended while passengers are entering or leaving the bus. You must remain stopped until the school bus moves ahead or until the stop sign arm and flashing lights are no longer shown. Watch for children crossing the road in front of, or behind the school bus. You are not required to stop for a school bus on a divided roadway when traveling in the opposite direction. A divided roadway is one in which the road is separated by physical barriers such as a fence, curbing, or separation of the pavement. Roadway striping by itself does not constitute a physical separation of the roadway. Caution, motorists should exercise extreme care when in the vicinity of any stopped school bus, as a child may dart from the front or the rear of the bus. The following image is an example of an undivided roadway. You must stop for any school bus with flashing lights if its stop sign arm is out. Below is an example of a divided roadway and you may proceed with caution if the school bus is in approaching lanes but not if it is stopped in your direction of traffic. Speed Limits Vehicle speed is an important part of traffic. Safety You must obey all speed regulations and be ready to adjust your speed quickly if necessary. Elements such as road conditions, traffic flow, and the number of crashes are used to determine the proper speed limits for roadways. You must obey all posted limits. The following speed limits must be observed when no limit is posted. 15 miles per hour when approaching a school crosswalk. 25 miles per hour in any business or residential district. 55 miles per hour on open highways or city freeways. 65 miles per hour on designated open highways. 75 miles per hour on rural freeways. White speed limit signs with black letters are regulatory signs and indicate the maximum speed you can legally go. Orange signs with black letters indicate recommended safe speeds due to the curvature or grade of the road or other special conditions at that location. Slow down until you are assured of safely navigating the location. Special speed limit areas. Adjusting speed to conditions. The speed limits are set for the best driving conditions. When driving in bad weather, your speed should be reduced to a level that is reasonable. Three guidelines are. When driving on wet roads, reduce your speed appropriately. When driving on roads with snow or ice, reduce your speed appropriately. When driving in bad weather, double the following distance from the vehicle in front of you and reduce speed appropriately. Impeding traffic. Driving too slowly can be as dangerous as driving too fast. Remember to drive in the right lane and allow faster moving vehicles to pass whenever you are driving slower than traffic around you. Traffic signs. Traffic signs regulate traffic and provide important information. The shape of a traffic sign can give you as much information about the meaning of a sign as the sign's color or wording. When visibility is poor, such as in heavy rain, dust storms, or fog, you may be able to make out only the shape of a particular sign. Regulatory Signs Octagon This shape is reserved for stop signs. You must come to a complete stop. Triangle This shape requires that you yield the right of way to cross traffic or to merging traffic. Rectangular These signs regulate traffic and direct the driver's speed and direction. Warning signs. Turn, curve and winding road signs. These signs are used to warn drivers of turns in the roadway. Below the signs may be small yellow square signs indicating the safe speed to drive through the curve. Pennant. This sign marks the beginning of a no passing zone. Diamond. Yellow, diamond shaped signs warn of a possible danger ahead. Signal ahead. Two way traffic. Bike crossing. Merge. Y intersection. Start of divided highway. Low clearance. Slippery when wet. Side road. Cattle crossing. Cross road to right. Four way intersection. Cross road to left. Graded hill. End of divided highway. Pedestrian crossing. School crossing sign. Permanent five sided. Pentagon-shaped, school crossing signs warn drivers that children may be crossing any time of the day. School crossing signs may be yellow. Yellow. 
Green signs are being posted by many Arizona school districts. Drivers must also obey the portable signs placed at times in the center of the roadway. The maximum speed from the first sign to pass the school crossing sign is 15 miles per hour. When portable signs are not in place, the normal speed limit for the area applies. Passing another vehicle in a school crossing zone is prohibited. There will often be a crossing guard assisting children crossing the roadway. Follow the instructions of the crossing guard, and come to a complete stop when any person is in the crosswalk. Railroad Warning Sign A circle-shaped sign provides a warning that you are approaching a railroad crossing. Railroad Crossing Sign This sign marks the location of a railroad crossing. When you arrive at a railroad crossing, you must stop no closer than 15 feet from the nearest railroad track when you observe any of the following. Flashing red lights. Lowered crossing barricade. Ringing bells. Flagger warning of an approaching train. Do not cross the tracks until all signals have stopped and the crossing barricade is up all the way. Do not drive around or under a lowered crossing barricade. In addition to obeying the regulations above, the following rules will reduce your chances of becoming another fatality. Expect a train on any track at any time. Do not get trapped on a railroad crossing. Get out of your vehicle if it stalls on the tracks. Look for a second train in the other direction. Never race with a train. Watch for vehicles such as buses and gasoline tankers, which must stop at railroad crossings. When driving at night, be alert for railroad crossing warning signs that are not lighted. Guide Highway Signs Interstate Route Marker U.S. Route Marker State Route Marker Mile Posts Arizona is one of the few states where all state highways have mileage markers. These reference posts are set two feet off the right shoulder and are about one mile apart. Mile posts can be used to tell where you are located if you are involved in a crash, have mechanical problems, or are out of gas. If you have to stop, note the route you are on and the approximate distance from a mile post. Roadway Construction and Temporary Work Zones Work zones are common and are set up for road construction or maintenance. They may be planned long-term projects with Permanent signs or temporary work areas set up for just a few hours with portable signs placed just for that activity. Work zones pose a unique hazard to drivers and the people who are there to perform the work. Crashes that commonly occur in a work zone are rear-end collisions from drivers going too fast, crashes with fixed objects or vehicles hitting people working in the area. Always be on high alert and expect to stop or slow down suddenly for changing or unexpected conditions including changes to the road surface. Workers in construction vehicles may be immediately adjacent to the travel lanes or may enter the travel lanes at any point in the work zone. Comply with the speed limit and other warning signs that are set up for your safety. Warning devices and signs. Alerting and controlling devices are used in road construction and in maintenance work areas to direct drivers or pedestrians safely, as well as to protect the safety of highway workers. Orange is the basic color for these devices. You must drive slowly and be especially alert at all construction sites. Always obey the posted speed limit. Fines double in work zones. Speed limits are set for a work zone not only to protect the drivers passing through, but also to protect the people who are performing the work. When signs are posted, fines for a speed violation are doubled. Fines double. Fines double when traffic violations occur in work zones on Arizona streets and roadways. Flaggers Flaggers are often used in road work zones to stop, slow or guide traffic safely through the area. Flaggers wear orange vests or jackets and use red flags or stop slash slow panels to direct traffic through work zones. Remember to drive carefully through construction areas to protect workers on the roadway. Construction and Maintenance Signs Construction and maintenance signs are used to notify drivers of possible danger in or near work areas. Most signs used in highway and street work areas are diamond-shaped. Flashing arrow panels Flashing arrow panels are used both day and night to give advance warning to drivers to move to the right or left into another lane. Slow down and prepare to merge in the direction of the arrow. 
Electronic Signs Electronic message signs are used on some roadways to give you advance warning of construction zones, special traffic directions, road closures, or even weather conditions. Cones, drums, and barricades. These devices are used to alert you and to guide you safely through the work area. At night, they may be equipped with warning lights. You must slow down when you drive through these areas. Pavement Markings Pavement markings are used to guide and warn drivers, as well as to regulate traffic. Markings may be either yellow or white and can appear in combinations. Each combination has a different meaning. Yellow center lines indicate that there is two-way traffic, flowing in both directions. White lines are used to separate lanes of traffic moving in the same direction and to mark the edge of the roadway, stop lines, and pedestrian crosswalks. Broken yellow lines Broken yellow lines separate lanes or traffic going in opposite directions and indicates that passing on the left is permitted when the roadway is clear. Since you are facing oncoming traffic, overtaking and passing must be done with extreme caution. Solid and broken yellow lines A broken yellow line alongside a solid yellow line indicates that passing is permitted only in one direction. If the broken yellow line is on your side, you may pass when the roadway ahead is clear. If the solid yellow line is on your side, you may not pass. Double yellow lines Double solid yellow lines mean that passing is not allowed in either direction. You may not cross the lines unless you are turning left. Broken white lines Broken white lines separate lanes of traffic going in the same direction. These lines may be crossed with caution. Remember to signal your intention to change lanes. Solid white lines Solid white lines are used for turn lanes and to prevent lane changes near intersections. Sometimes these lanes have arrows as seen below. Turn lane arrow If you are traveling in a lane marked with a curved arrow and the word only, you must turn in the direction of the arrow. If your lane is marked with both a curved and a straight arrow, you may turn in the direction of the arrow or you may go straight. Bicycle Bicycle warning Bike lane a bicycle painted on the road indicates the potential presence of bicyclists. Drivers should exercise caution. Painted curbs A painted curb means that you must follow special rules to park there. The colors on the curbs mean White You may stop only long enough to pick up or drop off passengers. Yellow You may stop only long enough to load or unload. Stay with your car. Red you may not stop, stand, or park. One-way streets If you will be traveling on a one-way street for several blocks, it is best to stay in the center lane. The left and right lanes will be used by turning vehicles. Use of lanes White lane lines White lane lines separate lanes of traffic moving in the same direction. Single white lines may also mark the right edge of the pavement. Broken white lines a broken white line separates two lanes traveling in the same direction. Once you have signaled, and if it is safe to do so, you may cross this line when changing lanes. Solid white line A solid white line marks the right edge of the roadway and separates lanes of traffic moving in the same direction. Only cross the solid line on the right edge of the roadway in case of emergency or to avoid a road hazard. Vehicles may cross a solid white line when merging into and out of the high occupancy, HOV, lane. Double solid white line. A double solid white line separates two lanes of traffic going in the same direction. Crossing a double solid white line is prohibited. Yellow lane lines. Yellow lane lines separate lanes of traffic moving in opposite directions. Single yellow lines may also mark the left edge of the pavement on divided highways and one-way streets. Reversible lanes Some travel lanes are designed to carry traffic in one direction at certain times and in the opposite direction at other times. These lanes are usually marked by double-dashed yellow lines. Before you start driving in them, check to see which lanes you can use at that time. There may be signs posted by the side of the road or overhead. Turning. Rules for turning apply at all locations, even driveways, and alleys, not just at intersections. Signal, 
reduce your speed and turn smoothly when safe to do so. As you turn, make sure to check for pedestrians, mopeds, and bicycles. In some areas, turns may be made from more than one lane. If this is allowed, signs and pavement markings will direct you. At some locations, turns may be prohibited by signs. Right turns. As you prepare to turn right, stay close to the right curb or edge of the road. Do not swing wide before or while turning. Right on red. When turning right at a red light, you must first stop completely before reaching the marked or unmarked crosswalk. Look for no turn on red signs. Always yield the right of way to pedestrians, bicyclists and oncoming traffic. Unless signs direct you otherwise, turn into the right lane of the road you enter. Left turns. On a two-way road, approach the turn with your car in the lane just to the right of the center line. Turn just to the left of the center point of the intersection. Enter the lane just to the right of the center line. This avoids conflict with other traffic making either right or left turns. If a special lane for making left turns has been signed or marked, use that lane do not turn left from any other lane. Left turn one-way road to one-way road. Approach with your car in the traffic lane nearest the left curb. Turn without swinging wide. Bring your car into the extreme left traffic lane on the road you are entering. This is the only left turn situation where, unless signs prohibit it, you may make the turn against a red light after stopping and yielding to traffic and pedestrians. Left turn two-way road to one-way road. Approach the turn in the traffic lane just to the right of the center line. As you enter the intersection, turn into the extreme left lane of the road you are entering. A right turn in the pattern also is shown. Left turn one-way road to two-way road. Approach the intersection in the traffic lane closest to the left curb. Turn into the lane just to the right of the center line. Do not move to the right lane without checking traffic to your right and signaling for a lane change. This turn cannot be made against a red light. Left turn two-way left turn lane. Many two-way streets have a center lane marked as a two-way left turn lane. This lane is bordered on either side by two yellow lines the inner line is broken, the outer line is solid. This lane is only for use of vehicles turning left in either direction. This lane provides a safe area to slow before a left turn off of the street, or to drive into when turning left from a side street or driveway. Drivers should follow these rules. Signal before entering the lane. Move completely into the lane. Be alert for others using the lane. Do not use the two-way left turn lane for passing, for through traffic or to accelerate in order to merge with through traffic. Metro Light Rail Metro Light Rail vehicles are operating on Valley Streets in Maricopa County. Vehicle traffic flows alongside light rail vehicles. Learn and follow the rules of light rail safety. Metro Safety by Design Improved Pedestrian Signals Improvements include countdown signals, new walkways, and landscaping to reduce jaywalking. Special attention has been given to safety in school zones with the installation of new signals at some crossings. Protected turn lanes. Automobiles may turn across the metro tracks only from designated turn lanes controlled by traffic signals. Train-only trackway. Metro travels in its own trackway, separated from traffic by 6-inch curbs. Auto traffic may cross only at controlled locations, and special traffic signals and warning signs activate when trains approach. Station Design Stations are designed to discourage jaywalking. Each station has two access points, reachable by signalized crosswalk. Station platforms and vehicle floors are the same height, providing passengers with a no-step entry. Signals at Frontage Roads Frontage roads near the tracks are controlled with traffic signals and are designed to handle large trucks and emergency vehicles. Vehicle Design Cameras inside and outside allow metro operators to ensure that passengers clear the doors while boarding and deboarding. Doors must close before the vehicle can move. Smooth stops mean that no wheelchair tie-downs are needed. Light Rail Coupler Design To minimize injuries in the event of a crash, the couplers that connect light. Rail vehicles are covered in an energy-absorbing material. 
train approaching sign. These electronic signs are posted at all metro light rail intersections and flash when a train is approaching the intersection. Combined U-turn and left turn sign. U-turns are permitted at almost all of the light rail intersections in the 20-mile metro system to allow vehicles to cross the tracks. Left turns and U-turns are controlled with traffic signals. Driving and bike riding. Never stop or park your car or bike on light rail tracks. Stop on red. A red arrow means do not turn. Look both ways before crossing the tracks by car or bike. Never drive your car or ride a bike in the area in which the train operates. Light rail trains are quiet. Pay attention near the tracks, look for flashing train headlights and listen for warning bells and horns. The ends of a light rail train are identical. White headlights show a train approaching, red tail lights show it moving away. Walking. Don't walk on or stand near the tracks. Cross only at crosswalks and obey the crosswalk signs. Be alert near the tracks, light rail is quiet. Look for flashing train headlights and listen for warning bells and horns. Adults should hold the hands of small children near the tracks and on station platforms. Kids, be smart, be safe. Stop, look, and listen around light rail tracks. Cross intersections only in a crosswalk and obey the crosswalk signs. At crosswalks, get off bikes and skateboards and walk them through the crosswalk. Never play near the tracks, and don't climb trees or fly kites or airplane models near the overhead power lines. Skateboarding, rollerblading, and riding bikes on the tracks or on light rail platforms is not safe and is not permitted. To learn more about Metro Light Rail Safety, Please visit valleymetro.org slash safety. Section 4. Sharing the road with other vehicles. Sharing the road with a bicyclist. Bicyclists must obey the same traffic laws as drivers of vehicles, and they have the right of way under the same conditions as motorists. Motorists should be alert for bicyclists along the roadway because bicyclists are often difficult to see. Extra caution is necessary. Motorists are required to allow a minimum safe distance of 3 feet when passing a bicyclist traveling in the same direction. It is not safe for motorists to honk their horn at bicyclists when passing, as this may startle them and cause them to crash. Bicycle Warning Bike Lane At night, dim your headlights to be courteous to bicyclists. Drivers should be prepared for a bicyclist swerving. Although bicyclists must ride with the flow of traffic and stay near the right side of the road, they can legally move left for several reasons, such as Turning left Avoiding hazards Passing pedestrians or vehicles If the lane in which the person is operating a bicycle is too narrow for a bicycle and motor vehicle to travel safely side by side. Important rules for bicyclists Ride in the same direction as traffic do not carry more persons than the design of the bicycle permits. Do not ride more than two side by side. Ride as near to the right side of the road as practicable. Use proper hand signals. Do not bicycle under the influence of drugs or alcohol it is illegal. When riding at night, have a white headlamp visible from 500 feet, and a rear reflector. You can improve your visibility to drivers with a flashing red beacon on the rear of your bicycle. Sharing the road with a motorcycle. Motorcyclists are more vulnerable to injury than a car driver if involved in a crash. Most car-slash-motorcycle crashes are the result of a car turning in front of a motorcycle, usually because the driver did not see the motorcycle or misjudged how close it was and how fast it was traveling. Watch for the unexpected and give the motorcycle its share of the road. Size. The smaller size of a motorcycle may make it hard to spot in traffic and it may appear to be farther away and traveling slower than it actually is. Because it is difficult to judge the distance and speed, drivers need to pay close attention and take extra care. Always watch for motorcycles. Lane Position Because of the motorcycle's size, its position within a lane will change as traffic conditions change. Often, this means riding in the left side of the lane to allow a better view of traffic and road conditions. However, as conditions change, the rider may move to the center or to the right side of the lane. 
These sideways movements sometimes occur suddenly to avoid hazards. Motorists need to be alert and drive accordingly. You must never attempt to share the lane with a motorcycle. The motorcyclist is entitled to the entire lane. Intersections Intersections are at risk for car-slash-motorcycle collisions, which are usually the result of a driver turning into the motorcycle's path. Do not assume the rider's intentions. A rider will move to one side not only to prepare for a turn, but also to avoid a hazard or to improve visibility. Always watch for motorcycles and be aware that one may unexpectedly come into your lane. Motorcycle turn signals do not automatically shut off, and riders may forget to cancel them after a turn is completed. Make sure you know what the rider is doing before you move into the motorcycle's path. Passing Motorcycles are allowed the full width of a lane in which to maneuver. Never crowd into the same lane as a motorcycle. Returning to the original lane too soon can force the rider to swerve into traffic or off the road. Sharing the road with a truck. Trucks are important to the Arizona economy, transporting products that are critical to our livelihoods. However, as a motorist, sharing the road with large trucks can make you feel very uncomfortable unless you learn how to share the road safely with large vehicles. Here are five ways to safely share the road with trucks. Don't cut in front of trucks. It takes trucks twice as long to stop. If you move into that space and have to brake suddenly, you cut the truck's available stopping distance in half, placing you and your passengers in danger. Watch out for the blind spots, or the no-zone, around large trucks and buses. Trucks have large blind spots around the front and back sides of the vehicle. Be safe and don't hang out in the no-zone. Follow trucks at a safe distance. Trucks are almost as wide as some lanes of travel. If you follow too closely behind, you won't be able to react quickly enough to changing traffic conditions. Pay close attention to truck turn signals. Trucks make wide right turns and sometimes must leave an open space to the right just before the turn. To avoid a collision, do not pass a truck on the right if there is any possibility that it might make a right turn. If you break down, pull off the highway as far as you can. If a parked vehicle on a highway shoulder is struck by a moving vehicle, the damage suffered by the parked car is more severe. When the moving vehicle is a truck weighing as much as 25 cars, the result could be tragic. Each of us must do our part to share the road to arrive safely at our destination. Slow Moving Vehicles Farm machinery and other slow-moving vehicles can be particularly hazardous. Be sure to maintain a safe following distance that provides an adequate field of vision. Farm machinery usually travels at 25 miles per hour or less, may take up more than one lane of the road, and may not have signals. To make a wide turn, operators or farm machinery may first pull to the left, then turn to the right. When you see this symbol on the back of a vehicle ahead, it is a warning to slow down. The vehicle with the sign cannot travel faster than 25 miles per hour. Do not become impatient if you find yourself behind one of these slow vehicles. It has the legal right to be there. Truck hauling an oversize load. Section 5. Actively avoiding crashes. Braking and stopping. It takes long distances to come to a safe, complete stop. Braking distances directly. Related to Speed of the vehicle Driver perception time, length of time it takes to see and recognize a dangerous situation The average is 0.75 seconds Driver reaction time, time from perception of danger to start of braking The average is 0.75 seconds Type and condition of the pavement Type and condition of the tires Vehicle weight, including when loaded or towing Type and condition of the brakes. The distance required to stop your vehicle is important in helping you choose a safe driving speed. It takes an average of 1.5 seconds for a person to perceive a threat in the roadway and react to that threat. This chart can be used as a guide, but your actual stopping distance will depend upon many of the factors listed above. Average stopping distance of cars on dry and level pavement. Stopping distances are based on tests made by the Federal Highway Administration with a driver reaction time of 3 fourths second. 
speed, mph. Stopping distance, feet. When vehicles ahead do something unexpectedly, you will need time to react. You need to keep enough following distance between you and the vehicles ahead to avoid a crash if the traffic stops suddenly. Allow at least a 3 second following distance for most driving situations, see page 26, space cushion. There will be situations where a longer, 3 to 6 seconds, following distance will be required. When driving on slippery roads, you should double your following distance to 6 seconds or more to allow for the extra distance needed to adjust your speed or to stop. When the driver behind you wishes to pass, reducing your speed will allow that driver to pass more quickly. The added distance will make it easier for the passing motorist to pull back into the lane. When you are following a large vehicle, such as a tractor trailer, that blocks your field of vision of the road ahead, you will need extra distance to see around the vehicle. Driving the open road Driving on empty rural highways can be just as dangerous as driving in heavy city traffic. Animals in the road, slow-moving farm equipment just over the crest of a hill or a low spot covered with water are not unusual hazards in rural driving. Stay alert, watch for warning signs, and slow down when approaching curves or hills that block your view of the roadway ahead. Weather conditions Driving becomes more difficult when your ability to see is reduced by bad weather or when the road surface is covered with rain, snow, or ice. Reduced visibility and traction problems often occur at the same time. Remember that changes in road and weather conditions will reduce your time to react and that those conditions will affect the way your car handles. You must be ready to respond. The first rule is to slow down to make up for reduced visibility and reaction time. Sun glare Bright sunlight in the early morning or late afternoon creates a glare when driving into the sun. Glare can be reduced by wearing sunglasses, keeping windows clean and using sun visors. If the sun is behind you, oncoming drivers may have the glare problem. They may not be able to see your signals or your car. Wind Strong winds, especially crosswinds, can make it more difficult for you to control your vehicle. Wind is very dangerous if you are driving a camper or large recreational vehicle, or if you are towing a trailer. Lightweight vehicles are also more difficult to control in strong winds. To gain more control over your vehicle in a strong wind, slow down. If you are approaching an open space after driving in a protected area, be alert for crosswinds that will push you to the side or middle of the road. If you are pulling a trailer, the wind may cause your vehicle to sway. Be ready to make necessary steering corrections. When you meet large trucks or buses, you may also have to make steering corrections. Because of the gusts of wind these vehicles create. If you are pulling a trailer, wind currents can cause your vehicle to jackknife. When a truck or bus is passing you on the left, move as far as possible to the right of your lane and slow down. As the vehicle passes, accelerate slowly to keep the trailer pulling in a straight path. If you are driving into a strong headwind, you may need to accelerate more, and steering will be more difficult. A tailwind will increase your speed, so you will have to decelerate and begin braking earlier to stop. Dust Storms Pull aside, stay alive. Dust storms are common in Arizona and can, at times, reduce a driver's visibility to zero. If you encounter a dust storm, Immediately check traffic around your vehicle and begin slowing down. Do not wait until poor visibility makes it difficult to safely pull off the roadway do it as soon as possible. If you encounter a severe dust storm, reduce your speed immediately. Drive completely off the highway. Stop as far to the right as possible. Do not stop in the travel lane or in the emergency lane. Turn off your lights and take your foot off the brake. Stay in the vehicle with your seat belts buckled. Wait until the dust storm has passed. Rain Driving in heavy rain can be hazardous, especially if you also encounter gusty wind conditions, such as in a thunderstorm. Vehicles to the rear and in blind spots are especially difficult to see. Wait a short time after the rain begins before using your wipers. The blades may cause smearing if you have a dirty windshield. You should slow. 
down to increase the distance between your vehicle and the vehicle ahead to at least 6 seconds. Be extra careful during the 30 minutes after rain begins, grime and oil on the road surface mix with water and make the road slippery. Hydroplaning may occur during rainstorms. In a heavy rain, your tires can ride on a film of water, and at 50 miles per hour your tires can lose all contact with the road. Underinflated, worn, or bald tires lose contact with the road at much lower speeds. The best way to prevent hydroplaning is to slow down. If your car does hydroplane, take your foot off the accelerator. Do not brake. Avoid steering changes, if possible. Hold the wheel firmly until your tires grip the road again. Heavy rain frequently causes flash floods in Arizona washes. Do not cross flooded washes. Water can stall your engine, hide potholes, and can carry your vehicle downstream. Estimate the depth of the water by looking at parked cars or other objects along the road, watch what other vehicles are doing. Two vehicles should not meet in deep water, one should go entirely through before another starts from the other direction. This reduces the possibility of stalling caused by waves of water. You may be charged for emergency response expenses if you or your vehicle needs to be removed from a flooded road. Driving through water must be done at a slow and steady speed. Applying the brakes gently with your left foot may help keep them dry. Check your brakes after leaving the water to see if they will stop the car. If the brakes are wet, they may suddenly grab or pull to one side. Dry them by accelerating slowly while gently holding down the brake pedal. Liability for emergency responses in flood areas A driver of a vehicle who drives around barricades set up due to flooding is liable for the expenses of any emergency response that is required to remove the driver or any passenger in the vehicle that becomes inoperable on a public street or highway. Expenses of an emergency response means reasonable costs directly incurred by agencies that make an appropriate emergency response to an incident. Fog Fog reflects light and can reflect your own headlights into your eyes. When driving in fog, use slow beams only and look for road edge markings to guide you. Even light fog reduces visibility and your ability to judge distance, so it is very important to slow down. Since conditions may change from moment to moment as you pass through areas of even thicker fog, you should adjust your speed and be prepared for emergency maneuvers. If necessary, pull off the road and turn your headlights off, then stay there until the fog lifts. Snow and Ice Snow limits visibility, so turning on your headlights is necessary to see and to be seen. Often, snow will completely cover lane markings. Drivers may tend to move away from the edge of the road, thus passing closer to each other. Snow or ice between your tires and the road greatly reduces your traction and increases the distance you need to stop by at least 6 seconds. On slippery surfaces, you have the most traction and control when the front tires are rolling, therefore, your vehicle will respond better to steering than to braking. If you decide to brake on ice or other slippery surfaces, apply the brakes gently, increasing the pressure as you feel the tires grip the road. Do not brake to the point that the wheels lock. If the wheels should lock, ease slightly off the brakes, but do not release them completely. This action may unlock them without losing brake power entirely. Then apply the brakes and ease off again, repeating the process. Additional suggestions for safe winter driving. Drive with caution. Do not change speed or direction suddenly. Clear snow or ice from all window and lights so you can see and be seen, before you start driving. Equip your car with snow tires or chains to help prevent skidding and reduce stopping distances. Slow down before stopping or turning, driving on packed snow is much like driving on ice. Watch for ice on bridges and in shady areas, bridge surfaces freeze before other road surfaces. Headlight use. Low visibility conditions. When there is sun glare, rain, dust, or any other condition where your vehicle may not be clearly visible to other drivers, turn on your headlights on low beam. Your headlights significantly improve your chances of being seen and help other drivers avoid a collision with you. On rural roads, your headlights help drivers who may consider passing in your lane see that you are approaching. Night driving. Reduced visibility, 
glare from oncoming headlights, and unseen objects in the road all combined to make night driving hazardous. In the late afternoon, as soon as the light begins to fade, turn on your headlights not parking lights to make your vehicle more visible to others. You must use headlights from sunset to sunrise, but be aware that other driver may not have turned on their headlights. Headlights are a poor substitute for daylight. Never drive so fast that you cannot stop within the distance you can see ahead with your lights. Use slow beams when driving on city or town streets. Use high beams on highways when no other vehicle is coming toward you within 500 feet. Switch to low beams whenever you meet oncoming traffic to avoid blinding the other driver. When following another car, use slow beams whenever you are within 200 feet. If the high beams of an oncoming car are not dimmed, avoid looking directly at the bright lights. Glance toward the right side of the road, then look ahead to determine the position of the other vehicle. Keep doing this until you have passed the other vehicle. Do not become a victim of highway hypnosis or white line fever, a trance-like state that can occur during a long period of highway driving. Any time you become tired when traveling, pull over and rest. Use the radio and fresh air to ward off highway hypnosis. Stop every hour to walk and exercise. This will help keep you alert. Wrong way driver awareness tips. How to drive at night. No matter the time of day, drivers should drive defensively. That means being constantly aware of driving conditions, your surroundings, and anticipating dangers so you can take evasive action if you encounter a hazard, such as a wrong way driver. Don't tailgate. Leave enough space so if the vehicle in front of you makes a sudden lane change to avoid a wrong way driver, you'll have time to react, too. Be aware of your surroundings. While wrong way drivers are usually in the left or HOV lane, they enter highways from the right via off-ramps. Because they are often impaired, their movements are unpredictable. What to do if you encounter a wrong way? Driver If you're on a divided highway like I-17, SR-51, US-60 or any freeway in Phoenix and all interstates and you see a vehicle coming toward you, slow down by easing your foot off the gas. Make sure there's no vehicle next to you and steer away from the wrong way driver. Get to a safe place, call 911 and report the wrong way driver. What to do if you see a message on an overhead sign warning of a wrong way driver? When aided is alerted to a possible wrong way driver, overhead messages boards on that stretch of freeway will display the message, alert, wrong way driver ahead. If you see that message, safely move toward the nearest highway exit as soon as possible. What you can do right now. Have a plan in mind, so if you encounter a wrong way driver you will not waste a moment to take emergency evasive action that could save your life. Never drive distracted or impaired. And never let an impaired driver get behind the wheel. Most wrong way crashes are caused by impaired drivers. It's up to all of us to keep impaired drivers off our roads. Use of alcohol and other drugs. Drinking and driving. Alcohol, drugs, and driving do not mix. A driver who drinks and slash or uses drugs can cause crashes, injuries and death. Driving is a serious business that requires the ultimate in skill and judgment both of which are diminished through consumption of alcohol or use of drugs. Alcohol or use of drugs seriously reduces your reflexes, physical control over the vehicle and ability to recognize dangerous situations. These combined physical effects make an impaired driver a dangerous driver. Even when you may not appear or feel impaired, alcohol and slash or the use of drugs produces a false sense of confidence in your driving ability. Open Container It is illegal for a driver or passenger to consume or possess an open container of spirituous liquor in the passenger compartment of a motor vehicle while on any public roadway. Passengers riding in a bus, limousine, taxi, or the living area of a motor home are exempt. Passenger compartment includes any unlocked compartments or portable devices within reach of the driver or passenger. It does not include the trunk or the area behind the last upright seat of a vehicle not equipped with a trunk. Do not drink and drive. Under 21 equals zero tolerance. License suspension for providing alcohol to minors. 
Upon convicting a person of knowingly purchasing for or providing spirituous liquor to a minor, the court may direct MVD to suspend the person's driver license, driving privilege, as follows. First conviction a period of not more than 30 days. Second or subsequent conviction a period of not more than 6, 6, months. Youthful drivers are substantially overrepresented in motor vehicle crashes, as compared to all other age groups. Alcohol involvement in vehicle crashes reaches its highest rate for those between the ages of 21 and 34. Further survey data indicates that adults between the ages of 21 and 29 are the most likely to drive after they have been drinking. The consequences of driving under the influence are getting tougher. Driving while impaired is a crime. The best way to avoid death, injury, penalties, and jail time is to practice zero tolerance. No alcohol. If you are under 21, any trace of alcohol, illegal drugs, or drugs that impair your ability to drive safely will result in stiff penalties, and your license will be suspended for two years. Remember that being under the legal limit of 0.08 blood alcohol concentration, BAC, does not mean that it is legal or safe for you to drive. Studies prove that alcohol impairs a person's ability to drive at levels substantially below 0.08 BAC. Road Rage and Aggressive Driving You may be cited for aggressive driving if you commit a series of acts during a single, continuous period of driving that presents an immediate hazard to another person or vehicle, exceed the posted speed limit and commit two of the following violations. Failure to obey traffic control signs or signals. Passing another vehicle on the right side. Unsafe lane change. Following too close. Failure to yield to emergency vehicles. The penalties for aggressive driving are. First offense you will be required to attend a traffic survival school course and your license may be suspended for 30 days. Second and subsequent offenses if you commit a second offense within 24 months. You are guilty of a Class 1 misdemeanor and your license will be revoked for 12 months. Emotions You cannot drive well if you are angry, excited, worried or depressed. Anger is the emotion that probably occurs most often while driving, especially in heavy traffic. Do not allow your emotions to influence the decisions you must make while driving. It is best to wait until you are calm before driving. Distracted driving may cause accidents, injury, or death. Physical fitness. Health. Your physical, mental, and emotional conditions are more important than any other potential problems you will face on the road. Even a simple headache or cold could affect your ability to drive safely. Be as objective as possible about your fitness to drive. Postpone your trip or have someone else drive if you are ill. Medical restrictions. Any condition that could affect the ability to drive safely must be reported to MVD. A person who has had a seizure within 90 days of applying for a driver license is required to report that medical condition to MVD. A person who already has a driver license and who has a seizure or other medical condition is required to cease driving, notify MVD and have a medical exam. The physician will submit results to MVD. Drowsy driving slash fatigue. If you find yourself feeling sleepy while driving, it is already past the time to get off the road. Fatigue dulls the mind and reduces your ability to act quickly and correctly. Five groups of drivers have been identified as at risk for crashes due to sleepiness, shift workers, business travelers, commercial drivers, those with sleep disorders and young people. Drowsy driving slash fatigue is an issue as serious and perilous as driving under the influence of alcohol but not as detectable. Rest is the only safe remedy. To avoid fatigue, follow these guidelines. Get plenty of rest before you start on a long trip. Avoid driving late at night. Take frequent rest stops, get out of the vehicle and exercise, breathe deeply and move around. Do not stare straight ahead, keep your eyes moving, and check your mirrors and dash gauges. Roll down the windows to get fresh air sing along with the radio, or chew gum. If possible, change drivers frequently. Driver Improvement Along with your Arizona driver license comes the obligation to drive responsibly. 
Driver improvement refers to the process of identifying those who are not driving responsibly and either correcting their behavior or removing their privilege to drive in Arizona. License revocation. Revocation is the removal of your privilege to drive. It is required by law, upon conviction of certain driving offenses. Once your revocation period has ended, your driving privilege will remain revoked until an investigation is completed. The investigation is to determine that all withdrawal actions have ended, and the all statutory requirements are met. You will be required to pay the appropriate application fee and a $20 reinstatement fee, and you may be required to file a certificate of insurance, commonly known as an State Route 22. A written vision and road test may be required. Your driving privilege will be revoked for, but not limited to, any homicide or aggravated assault involving use of a vehicle. Any felony in which a vehicle is used. Perjury relating to the ownership or operation of a vehicle. Failure to stop and render aid at the site, if you are involved in a traffic crash. Aggravated DUI, driving while under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Causing death or serious physical injury by use of a vehicle. Your driving privilege will be revoked for two or more convictions for DUI Reckless driving Racing on the highways In addition, your driving privilege may also be revoked for failure to take and pass a required driving retest. If you are determined to be medically, psychologically, or physically incapable of operating a motor vehicle, if continued operation of a motor vehicle would endanger the public health, safety, or welfare, Vehicle impound. A vehicle shall be impounded or immobilized when any of the following apply. The person's driving privilege is suspended or revoked for any reason. The person has never been issued a valid driver license or permit and the person does not provide an out of state driver license. The person is subject to an ignition interlock device requirement and is operating a vehicle without a functioning certified ignition interlock device. The person is not in compliance with Arizona's financial responsibility requirements, and the person is driving a vehicle that is involved in a crash that results in either property damage or injury to or death of another person. Suspension and Traffic School Suspension is the temporary removal of your driving privilege. It is an action that may be taken after a review of your driving record or when mandated slash required by law. The suspension remains in effect until application for reinstatement is made. In addition to the reinstatement fee, you must pay the appropriate license application fee for your age group. Each time you are convicted or forfeit bail for a moving traffic violation, points are assessed against your permanent driving record. If you accumulate 8 or more points within any 12-month period, you are required to attend Traffic Survival School TSS, or your driving privilege may be suspended. Violation points are assessed as follows. DUI 8 Extreme DUI 8 Reckless driving 8 Racing on highways 8 Aggressive driving 8 Aggravated DUI 8 Leaving the scene of a crash 6 Failure to stop for a traffic signal, stop sign, or to yield the right of way causing death 6 Failure to stop for a traffic signal, stop sign, or to yield the right of way causing serious injury 4. Speeding 3. Driving over or parking in a gore area 3. Wrong way driving 2. All other moving violations 2. MVD may suspend or revoke your driving privilege or require you to attend and successfully complete an approved traffic survival school, TSS, if you have been convicted of running a red light or flashing red light. TSS is mandatory in addition to paying all court fines slash fees. Have been convicted of frequent serious offenses for violations of traffic laws and a disregard for the safety of others. Have been convicted of reckless driving or are a repeat reckless or negligent driver. Have committed or permitted an unlawful or fraudulent use of your driver license. Have been convicted of driving a motor vehicle while under the influence of alcohol, drugs, or toxic vapors. Have been arrested for refusal to take or successfully complete a chemical test, alcohol slash drug content. The penalty for refusal or unsuccessful completion is a 12-month suspension of your driver license, 
or two years for a second or subsequent refusal within a seven-year period. Have an unresolved judgment from another state. Have committed an offense for which mandatory revocation of the driving privilege is required upon conviction. Are under 21 and have been convicted of receiving, consuming, or possessing alcohol. Are under 21 and have been convicted of any illegal drug violation. Are medically unsafe to drive a motor vehicle. Have been convicted as a driver in a crash, resulting in death or personal injury or serious property damage. Have been convicted of violating a driver license restriction. Have failed to comply with a certified ignition interlock device order. Are under 18 and have been convicted. Of your first moving civil traffic violation or certain criminal traffic offenses. Have been convicted of wrong way driving on a controlled access highway. Following the suspension or revocation period of your license, you must pay the appropriate application fee to reinstate your license. In addition, you may be subject to an investigation and you may be required to file an State Route 22 Certificate of Insurance. Driving on a suspended or revoked license. If you are cited for driving on a revoked or suspended license, your vehicle may be impounded by the law enforcement agency for up to 30 days. If you are convicted of driving on a suspended or revoked license, you may be eligible for a restricted driver license. A person that is convicted of not having or failing to produce evidence of current financial responsibility within the vehicle shall receive a suspension of the driving license, vehicle registration, and license plates, as directed by the courts, for 3 months for a first violation, 6 months for a second violation within 36 months. One year for a third or subsequent violation within 36 months. Failure to appear or pay fine for citation. Your driver license will be suspended if MVD has been notified that you have not appeared in court or have failed to pay a traffic violation charge. When you are cited for a traffic violation, your signature on the citation is a promise to appear in traffic court. If you fail to appear in court, or fail to pay a fine, the court will direct MVD to suspend your driving privilege. If you are under 18, your driving privilege may be suspended for failure to appear in court, pay a fine or failure to comply with any court order. Traffic Ticket Enforcement Arizona courts report to MVD any person who is delinquent paying fines or penalties for civil or criminal traffic slash boating violations, or who has failed to appear in a criminal traffic slash boating case. MVD is then required to update the person's record to prohibit the renewal of any vehicle registrations with that person as an owner. Nitrous Oxide If you are under 18, it is unlawful to use false identification to cause a person to sell, serve, give, or furnish a nitrous oxide container. These actions will result in your driving privilege being suspended, you are also subject to possible fines and slash or a jail sentence. Nitrous oxide is commonly known a laughing gas and has a variety of uses, including as an anesthetic by doctors and dentists. It can also be addictive and long-term use may cause severe medical problems or death. The suspension penalties are First offense your driving privilege will be suspended for six months. Second and subsequent offenses your driving privilege will be suspended for 12 months. Altered or fictitious license it is unlawful to display any license that you know is cancelled, revoked, suspended, fictitious or altered. It is also illegal to alter a license or obtain a false driver license. These actions will result in your driving privilege being suspended. You are also subject to possible fines and slash or a jail sentence. Driving under the influence it is unlawful for any person who is under the influence of intoxicating liquor or any drugs to drive or be in actual physical control of any vehicle. When you apply for and accept the privilege to drive a vehicle in Arizona, you give consent to be tested for alcohol and drugs if you are arrested for driving while under the influence of intoxicating liquor or drugs, DUI. This is known as the implied consent law. When a law enforcement officer has reason to believe you have been driving while under the influence, the officer will request that you submit to a test of your blood, breath, urine, or other bodily substance to measure the amount of alcohol or drugs present in your bloodstream. DUI Penalties 
If you are stopped for driving under the influence and a test shows that you have an alcohol concentration of 0.08% or more, 0.04 in a commercial vehicle requiring a commercial driver license, you will lose your driving privilege on the spot. You may be found guilty of driving while intoxicated even if the BAC was less than 0.08%. If you are under 21, your license may be suspended if there is any alcohol concentration. If you refuse to submit to or do not successfully complete any tests when you are arrested for driving under the influence, you will automatically lose your driving privilege for 12 months, or 24 months for a second refusal within 84 months. In addition to any criminal penalties imposed by the court for a second or third offense DUI violation, your driving privilege will be automatically revoked. DUI First offense you will be jailed for not less than 10 consecutive days, your driver license will be suspended for not less than 90 days, and you will be assessed a fine of not less than $1,250. You will also be required to undergo alcohol screening slash education slash treatment and will be ordered to perform community service and may be ordered to equip any vehicle you operate with a certified ignition interlock device. Second and subsequent offenses you will be jailed for not less than 90 days, fined not less than $3,000, and your license will be revoked for 12 months. You will also be required to undergo alcohol screening slash education slash treatment and may be ordered to equip any vehicle you operate with a certified ignition interlock device, and will be ordered to perform community service. Extreme DUI This category of DUI applies to a person with an alcohol concentration of 0.15 or higher. First offense you will be jailed for not less than 30 consecutive days and fined not less than $2,500. If the alcohol concentration is 0.20 or higher, you will be jailed not less than 45 days and will not be eligible for suspended sentence. You will also be required to undergo alcohol screening slash education slash treatment and will be ordered to perform community service and to equip any vehicle you operate with a certified ignition interlock device. Second and subsequent offenses you will be jailed for not less than 120 days find not less than $3,250 and your license will be revoked for 12 months. If the alcohol concentration is 0.20 or higher, you will be jailed not less than 180 days and will not be eligible for suspended sentence. You will also be required to undergo alcohol screening slash education slash treatment and to equip any vehicle you operate with a certified ignition interlock device, and will be ordered to perform community service. Aggravated DUI This category of DUI applies to a person who commits a DUI while their driving privilege is suspended or revoked, commits a third DUI in seven years, or commits a DUI while a person under 15 is in the vehicle. The aggravated DUI law also includes a violation where a person who is subject to a certified ignition interlock device CIID, requirement commits a DUI or extreme DUI violation. You will be sent to prison for not more than two years and, in addition to any other penalty required by law, your license will be revoked for one year. You will also be required to undergo alcohol screening slash education slash treatment and to equip any vehicle you operate with a certified ignition interlock device. Certified ignition interlock device A certified ignition interlock device is a breath alcohol testing instrument connected to the ignition and power system of the vehicle. The driver blows into the device before attempting to turn the ignition. If the driver's alcohol level is above a certain level, the vehicle will not start. While the vehicle is in operation, the driver must blow into the device at random intervals. Arizona law allows a person to obtain a special ignition interlock restricted driver license while the person's Class D or Class G driving privilege is under suspension or revocation after a minimum period of 90 days has been served for any of the following. First offense for an implied consent violation. Conviction of aggravated DUI or extreme DUI with a minor in the vehicle. Conviction of DUI or extreme DUI or having any spirituous liquor in the person's body while operating a motor vehicle while under 18 years of age. Conviction of operating a motor vehicle while 18 to 20 years of age with any spirituous liquor in the person's body. Or, 
during a revocation for two DUIs within an 84-month period after a minimum period of 45 days has been served, and one of the violations is on or after January 1, 2012. The person must comply with the certified ignition interlock device requirements, complete alcohol treatment classes when required and carry proof of future financial responsibility insurance. Executive Hearing Office the Executive Hearing Office conducts hearings which have been requested by individuals or businesses contesting an order issued by MVD. Although there are many kinds of hearings, most involve an appeal to an order suspending or revoking a driver license. Usually, the suspension or revocation results from traffic law violations. Whenever you have the right to appeal an order, the notice of suspension slash revocation will inform you of the procedure to be followed if you choose to request a hearing. It is particularly important to file a hearing request within the time required by law. You may lose your right to the hearing if you delay. If you need additional information concerning the hearing procedure, call the Executive Hearing Office at 602-712-7737. Remember, the law only allows the Executive Hearing Office to provide general information. For more specific legal advice, you might consider consulting an attorney. Section 6. Handling Emergencies Skids, tire blowouts and mechanical failures can happen at any time. You need to be prepared to handle them. The following recommendations are to assist you with emergency situations. Tire Failure Reduce your chances of a blowout by checking your tire pressure regularly. If a tire blowout occurs, hold the steering wheel tightly and keep your vehicle going straight. Ease off the gas pedal, do not apply the brakes. Let the vehicle slow down until it is almost stopped. Just before your vehicle stops, activate your turn signal to let other drivers know you are moving to the side of the road, then pull off the roadway and apply the brakes. Fire Fires are usually caused by a short circuit in the electrical system. If you have a fire, pull quickly off the road. Shut off the ignition to cut electrical power and get all passengers away from the car. Call 911. Always carry a fire extinguisher. An ABC rated dry chemical extinguisher is best for vehicle fires. Do not use water if gasoline is burning since this will spread the flames. If you do not have a fire extinguisher, a heavy blanket, a heavy coat or sand can help to smother the flames. Fires are dangerous. If you have any indication that the fire may be beyond your control, get away from the vehicle. Overheating Steam coming from under your hood may mean that your cooling system has overheated. You should Pull to the side of the road and turn off your engine immediately. Raise the hood but do not open the radiator cap. Opening the radiator cap while the engine is hot may allow steam to escape and cause severe burns. Carry extra water in your car to add to your radiator if the engine overheats. Never Attempt to add water while the engine is hot. Add water only after the engine has cooled. Power steering failure, example, your engine dies as you pull around a corner. Firmly grip the steering wheel with both hands to complete the turn and move to the right side of the road. Stop the car, push the brakes extra hard if your vehicle has power brakes. Headlight Failure Try the high beam slash low beam switch. This may restore normal function. Turn the headlight switch on and off several times. If neither of these steps work, put on the parking lights, emergency flashers, or turn signals, pull to the side of the road and stop. Brake Failure Many vehicles feature anti-lock braking systems, ABS. Do not pump anti-lock brakes. If a vehicle does not have anti-lock brakes, pump the brakes rapidly. This may build up enough pressure to stop your vehicle. If pumping the brakes does not work, slowly apply the parking brake. Be sure to hold the brake release so you can ease off the brake if the rear wheels lock and the car begins to skid. Shift to lower gear and look for a safe place to stop. Crashes Avoiding a crash if you are stopped at a traffic light or stop sign and another vehicle is approaching you from behind at a high rate of speed, you should. If possible, pull your vehicle forward in an effort to give the approaching 
vehicle more room to stop. If the crash cannot be avoided, brace yourself between the steering wheel and the back of the seat and release your brake an instant before impact. This will help to lessen the impact. If you are in danger from a potential head-on crash, do one of the following. Reduce your speed and flash your headlights and use your horn in an effort to warn the other driver. Head for the shoulder and get off of the road away from the oncoming driver. If you cannot avoid the crash, try to maneuver your vehicle in such a way as to lessen the severity of impact. Always wear your safety belts. This is the best thing you can do to protect yourself from injury in the event of a crash. Compromising Another important defensive driving skill is compromise. When you cannot separate risks, and you must deal with two or more at the same time, compromise by giving the most room to either the greatest or most likely danger. For example, if you are driving on a two-lane street with oncoming cars to your left and a child riding a bike to your right, the child is the most likely to move suddenly, so you need a larger space cushion to the right. In this case, moving closer to the center line is the correct compromise. Recovering from skids Driving on a slippery roadway surface or braking too sharply can throw your vehicle into a skid. When this occurs, there are several actions to take. Do not press on the brake any further, this will only make the skid worse. Turn the wheel quickly in the direction you want your vehicle to follow, in the direction of the skid. As the car begins to straighten out, turn the wheel quickly back the other way so your vehicle does not skid in the opposite direction. Continue turning the wheel back and forth as necessary until your vehicle straightens to its normal path. Debris on the road Debris on the roadway is common in Arizona. Pieces of blown tires, unsecured materials falling off trucks, rocks falling onto the road during a storm, and other debris all pose hazards. Drivers need to be constantly aware of their surroundings and prepare for the unexpected. A common crash related to debris is a driver swerving to avoid the hazard, losing control of their vehicle and leaving the roadway. In some cases, driving over the debris would have resulted in a much less severe incident. That's a decision you may have to make in a fraction of a second. Stay constantly alert and always be thinking ahead about what you would do if you suddenly have debris show up in front of you. Animals on the road Animals large and small can do a lot of damage to your vehicle or cause you to lose control. Wildlife may dart onto the road in unexpected locations. Livestock such as cows and horses may be let onto the road by people leaving gates open or cutting fences. If you encounter an animal on the road, slow down as much as you can and maneuver to avoid a direct crash without losing control of your vehicle. If the animal is not yet on the road, do not sound your horn, as that may startle the animal and cause it to run out in front of you. If you see an animal on the road that is a hazard to traffic, call 911 and report it to law enforcement. Crash Procedures Reporting Crashes If you are involved in a crash, you are to remain at the scene to provide assistance to any person injured and to exchange information with the other drivers. You should provide Driver license number Name and address Insurance company name and policy number Information on witnesses of the crash License plate numbers In case of injury, you are also required to immediately call the police. Assisting at the scene of a crash if you are one of the first persons to come upon the scene of a crash, pull your vehicle off the road and turn on your hazard flashers. Turn off the ignition of vehicles involved in the crash. Notify emergency officials call 911. Do not stand or walk in traffic lanes. Ask others who have stopped to warn the approaching traffic. In the event of a crash, provided there has been no serious physical injury or fatality, the vehicles involved in the crash shall be removed from the main traveled portions of the roadway. Any licensed driver may move the vehicle as long as the vehicle is safely operable, does not require towing and can be operated under its own power, and the movement does not cause further damage to the vehicles or increase traffic hazards. Any person who removes a motor vehicle from the main traveled portion of the roadway prior to the arrival of law enforcement personnel shall not be held liable or at fault for the crash based solely on the fact the vehicle was moved. Quick Clearance 
in the event of a minor, non-injury crash. Drivers should get their vehicles, if they are operable, out of travel lanes as soon as it's safe to do so. State law requires a driver involved in a minor crash without injuries to remove a vehicle from the roadway if it is operable and can be moved safely. Quickly moving your vehicle out of travel lanes provides a safer environment to inspect your car for damage. Moving your vehicle to the emergency shoulder, median or exiting the highway also provides a safer environment for first responders and keeps travel lanes clear for other vehicles, reducing the chance of a secondary crash. If you are involved in a crash, the first action to take is to make sure you and occupants in your vehicle are okay. Then, if your vehicle is operable, Move to the emergency shoulder, median or exit the highway and call 911. Stay out of travel lanes, be alert and watch approaching traffic. Remember, never leave the scene of a crash. Fender bender. Save your rear and quickly clear. Failure to stop at a crash. If you are a driver involved in a crash where there is damage to a vehicle, injury or death, you are required by law to stop your vehicle and remain at the scene of the crash. Provide aid to any injured person, including making arrangements for medical treatment by calling 911. Provide your name, address and license plate number to emergency providers and law enforcement. Conviction for failure to stop will result in your driving privilege being suspended for one year if involving only damage to a vehicle. Revoked for three years if involving injury other than death or serious physical injury. Revoked for five years, not including the time you are incarcerated, if involving a serious physical injury. Revoked for ten years, not including the time you are incarcerated, if involving a death. Section 7. Law Enforcement. The below information has been provided by the Arizona Department of Public Safety in partnership with local law enforcement agencies. Traffic Stop Safety In order to protect the safety of the motoring public, law enforcement officers will routinely conduct traffic stops to address an observed violation of the law. When you are the subject of a traffic stop it is important that you understand the following expectations for the safety of yourself, your passengers, the officer, and other motorists on the roadway. When observing law enforcement lights and slash or sirens activated behind you, drivers should immediately yield to the right side of the roadway by activating your turn signal, checking blind spots and vehicle mirrors, and yielding to the right shoulder or curb of the roadway. The driver should stop their vehicle in a safe location off the highway or off the main traveled portion of the roadway as soon as practical. Appropriate areas to pull over include the emergency shoulder or off-ramp of a highway, shoulder of a city street, in a business parking lot, or as directed by the law enforcement officer. Avoid stopping on an overpass, bridge, curved roadway, or any area with limited or no space available to the right of the vehicle. If the officer feels the area is unsafe, the officer may direct you to move your vehicle to a different location. Drivers are expected to comply with law enforcement officer's orders during a traffic stop. Failure to follow or refusal to comply with any lawful order or direction of a peace officer is a violation of the law and can result in the driver being arrested. Drivers and passengers may be ordered to remain in the vehicle, exit the vehicle and may be ordered to move to a safer location. Passengers may be ordered to remain on scene. After the car is stopped drivers should Put the car in park. Remain in the vehicle. Keep your seatbelt fastened. This also applies to any other vehicle occupants. Keep your hands on the steering wheel in a visible location. Wait for the law enforcement officer to approach your vehicle and make contact. Consider lowering your windows, especially if tinted, to allow for additional visibility and communication to ensure the safety of all parties involved with the traffic stop. At night, turn on overhead passenger compartment lights to illuminate the inside of the vehicle, and if requested, inform the officer of any weapons on your person or in the vehicle. In addition to the guidelines above, drivers with firearms in the vehicle should keep your hands on the steering wheel in a visible location and when the officer approaches let them know that you have a firearm in the vehicle and where the firearm is located. If requested, the officer may take possession of the weapon, for safety reasons, until the contact is complete.
drivers should not reach around inside the vehicle. If you need to reach for an item, contact the officer verbally to indicate the item you need to locate and only do so after the officer has given verbal confirmation. Get out of the vehicle unexpectedly or approach the officer. If you need to exit your vehicle, contact the officer verbally to ask to exit the vehicle, only exit after the officer has given verbal confirmation to do so. While every traffic stop varies based on the circumstances of the stop, drivers can generally expect the officer to greet the driver, identify themselves as a law enforcement officer, obtain the driver license, vehicle registration, and proof of insurance. Inform the individual of the reason for the stop and explain the circumstances for issuance of the citation or warning. Check both the validity and authenticity of the driver license. The following forms of identification are acceptable in identifying the driver during a traffic stop. Arizona Driver License Out-of-State Driver License Temporary License Learner Permit Military ID, or Consulate slash International Driver License Depending on the nature of the stop the officer may issue a citation, warning, or take a violator into custody. The citation should contain the specific code or statute and a description of the violation. Signing for or accepting a citation from an officer is not an admission of guilt or responsibility, it's simply acknowledging the receipt of the citation in the case of a civil violation and promising to appear in the case of a criminal violation. All citations will be referred to a local jurisdiction for a hearing. Drivers can utilize the court system to address criminal or civil matters with the option of a diversion program in some cases, such as driver education training. Law enforcement officers are expected to maintain the highest level of professionalism during a traffic stop. Should questions arise regarding the officer's conduct during a traffic stop, drivers should contact the officer's law enforcement agency or supervisor using the officer information located on the citation. Please visit the AIDIT website at az.gov for information on Applying for a title and registration. 90-day resident registration. Temporary registrations. What to do after you sell a vehicle. License plate credit and how to apply for a refund. Vehicle inspections. Emission testing. Vehicle insurance. Registration compliance program. Alternative fuel vehicles, AFV. Always be prepared. Be prepared for emergencies. Consider packing an emergency kit containing some of the items listed below. Water containers slash drinking water. Fire extinguisher. First aid kit. Sunglasses. Food. Can opener. Flashlight. Blankets. Gloves. Maps. Paper towels. Tire chains. Gasoline can robe, electrical tape, flares, jumper cables, absorbent cloths, mirror, motor oil, notepad and pencil, jack, lug wrench and spare tire, hand tools, screwdriver, pliers, wrenches, blank page, Arizona Department of Transportation, Motor Vehicle Division, az.gov.